Absolutely. You can intro me if you like. Oh, uh, well, see, I'm going to be doing all the sharing, so that's <laughs> okay. kind of the problem. I don't have anybody else with me um, to go ahead. Yep. So you are already live on the page, I think, almost. Yeah, we're live on the page now. Um, the Business Not Bullshit live page, if you want to go in there, I'm about to share it out to all the groups that agreed, my group and Oz's group and a few other groups. Yep. We're going to dive in. So while I do that, people will be hopping on. Um, yeah, so let's share this out. Okay. We got one viewer so far. Hey, when you're, if you're here and you're watching on the page, leave a comment. Let us know that you're here. I'm just getting this shared out to all the groups that are going to be viewing this, and we will get started. How's everything going with you, John? It's going awesome, man. It's glad to be here. Uh, I'm actually... Uh... Um, sitting by the beach as we speak. I'm in my I'm in I'm in my broadcaster uniform. You know, I got I got the shirt on, but I'm in my board shorts uh, underneath. So <laughs> I'm heading out to the beach. What part of the world are you in today? I'm in a place called um, Broad Beach, which is on the Gold Coast, on the east coast of Australia. It's uh, uh, about an hour south of Brisbane. Uh, it's literally right on the ocean. I don't know if you can. I don't know if people can actually see this. I will show them. I'll come out of focus, but uh, the ocean is directly just behind me here. Um, so I'm hanging out here for uh, one more day and then uh, heading back to the States. Okay. Oh, what part of the States are you going to? I've got a conference in Anaheim, then from Anaheim, Idaho Falls, Idaho Falls to San Francisco and then to Denver. Um, so running around, uh, you know, uh, trotting around the globe. Awesome. Which is not new for me. <laughs> we got Denver coming up in about uh, a month. Three less weeks. Than a month. Three a month, yeah, less than a month. Yeah. Three and a half, four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to talk about that today a little bit too. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we're all shared out. We got about eight people watching us. Hi, Mackenzie. Hi, Randy. If you guys, the ones that are watching now, um, I am sharing this out to like three or four different groups. So, if you have questions and um, I don't see it because I don't know where to look, um, I made a quick Google form, so John is going to spend some time on answering any questions you have, throw curveballs at him, put them on the spot. Uh, he's good at that. So there's a link there. Um, it's biznotbs.com forward slash questions. It'll submit to a Google form, and I will, at the end of the Q&A, uh, I'll just read off any questions that we have. Any questions, literally, guys, just ask them. Um, John, I, I'll probably butcher the introduction, so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, and we can just get started. Okay, um, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll share my screen. Um, hopefully, uh, you'll be able to uh, toggle to my keynote. Da, 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 da. Okay, I see a blue Hang on screen. There. How do I share? How do I share? Can you see my keynote? Yeah, I see it. You see it? Okay. So, um, I, what I want to talk today essentially is about fast action client strategies to generate uh, consulting clients. Uh, and originally, um, uh, Baldi, thanks for inviting me to Biz Not BS group and all the other Facebook groups that we're watching out or uh, watching today. Um, I'm going to walk through some pretty simple strategies in terms of the idea is, you know, let's go and get clients fast, right? I, I, if I want to put results in my bank account, <clears throat> what are some of the things that I've got to do? to generate that opportunity as quickly as possible. For those of you who don't know me, um, I'm essentially, uh, one of my businesses is to teach people like yourself, consultants from around the world and agencies, uh, to <clears throat> look, to, look at scaling their businesses, getting out to their markets a lot faster, targeting better quality customers, um, and how to shorten the sales cycle to generate consulting clients. I work with literally uh, over 200 consultants so far around the world. Um, this last 16 months generated over $42 million in contracts. I also am closely uh, <clears throat> involved with another agency. We did $5 million selling one sales funnel in one market um, in the last nine months. Uh, so uh, in, as, in terms of generating clients for consulting businesses, um, this is what I've been doing for 27 years myself. I have uh, two agencies myself. Uh, I live in Australia, although I pretty much spend most of my time traveling. Um, uh, I feel like I don't have um, a permanent residency at the moment, but uh, 
uh, I pretty much live in the first eight rows of an airplane. A lot of people uh, always are hearing that I'm traveling a lot and I do. The reason I do this, I go to a lot of events, a lot of trade shows, a lot of conferences. Um, I want to, you know, for me, it's important to keep um, uh, where the trends are ahead of industries. I work in the robotics and the software market. So I go to a lot of tech conferences. Um, but I just, uh, uh, for the people that I work with, I share the insights that I garner from my travels around the world and with the industries that I connect with so that they have opportunities to go and generate clients. And in the consulting world, let me tell you, what's going to be happening in the next five to 10 years um, is uh, the opportunity is quite significant. Uh, so the key here is I want to talk about how you can generate clients as quickly as possible. I'm going to share some strategies. I'm going to share you some case studies. Um, and I'm also going to share uh, an opportunity where you get to hang out with uh, Baldeep and myself and others uh, who are in this group, in, in these groups uh, at a live event that's happening in Denver. And I'm going to share uh, a ridiculous invitation to you um, uh, on this call. Balls is laughing uh, he, because he knows what the ridiculous invitation or ridiculous offer is. So <clears throat> I want to get into it. Awesome. More leads. Everybody wants more leads, right? Uh, it's one of the biggest things that people want. They want more leads. I personally want more sales. I don't want more leads. Um, so what I'm trying to find is people who are ready to buy is what, what I'm looking for. The way I determine that is what do I do for my clients. The more clear I am in terms of how I can help my clients, the easier it is for me to engage customers in the market. The number one thing that a lot of people don't uh, make a mistake of in this market is they're not really clear about their offering. If you're not super clear about what you're offering to the market, it makes it really hard for the market to make a purchasing decision. Um, right now, 3% of the market is ready to buy your services right now. We're going to do a strategy on this call that if you apply this strategy, um, uh, don't be shocked if you get a customer tomorrow, right? Um, so we're going to, I'm going to be sharing an idea with you. You can literally take it, swipe it, do it. Uh, straight away and the idea is to get yourself into a, a customer opportunity for purchase within the next 24 hours. Maybe if you're, depending on what side of the world you're on, you might even do it in a matter of an hour. I've seen results as quickly as an, as an hour. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, clarity is key in terms of your business. Number two, who benefits the most? If we're really super clear about who we can get a result for, then it makes it a lot easier for us to do a couple of things. One, it makes it easiest, easy for us to identify a customer. Number two, it makes it easy for us to engage and connect with our customer because if it is a great, if it is a benefit that you deliver to that customer, they're going to be interested. They're more likely to be interested because it's a relatable strategy or a relatable offer to them. I'm going to show you an example of that in, in the presentation today. So the more relevant we are to the benefit that we offer, the end result that we can create, the easier it is for the customer to say, I want that. I need you. I need to talk to you. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to share with you a pitch. It's a, it's a 120 second pitch, two minutes, but it's really, in actual fact, it's a one minute pitch. It asks three questions, three times. I'm going to walk you through the pitch because you have to rephrase it in your own words because it's going to relate to your business. And if you do this, I've had a person, the challenge to beat, the number to beat is 17 appointments. Uh, the, the, the person that's taken this challenge, the, the most appointments they've generated out of this strategy I'm going to share with you a little bit in, in a little while is 17 appointments. I had one person who took this idea, made nine appointments uh, in one minute. Um, I had another person who took this idea, got five appointments. I had another person who went to, who did this three times in a week um, and generated 15 appointments over, over the period of a week, just doing this one thing. So I'm going to share with you an idea strategy that if you take it on board, that the most dangerous thing, dangerous thing that's going to happen is you're going to be sitting in front of an interested customer. That would be the worst thing that can happen is that you will sit down and somebody in front of somebody that wants to buy your stuff, which is what it's all about. All right. So um, are people liking this? Are they, what sort of feedback are we getting? Just to uh, make sure, because I can't uh, see any of you. Yeah, we got <coughs> right now 23 live viewers. Um, it's going to be rising. We're shared out in multiple groups. So yeah. um, they're going to be commenting everywhere. So Guys, again, if you have questions, which I'm sure you will, John is going to stay longer and answer every question you have. Um, there is yep. a link to a form for you to ask the questions just so I can get all of that in one place. Um, it's biznotbs.com forward slash questions. Ask your questions there. This is the real deal. So, John, just, just get, right into the, get right into it. Okay. So, um, what are the three key problems that I solve or questions that I want to answer? If I can answer these three questions, 
uh, or look at the problems or the challenges that, that, that my potential customer has, that it makes it easy for the customer to put up the hand and say, I, I need to do this. You know what I'm talking about, I'm interested. So for example, um, uh, I'll give you a perfect example in the tech uh, market because we do uh, CRM and email marketing as part of our consulting. Uh, the three key problems that they face is one, they don't know how to communicate to their entire customer base uh, effectively. So they're not doing regular communication. The second thing is, is that their data is all over the place. It's actually on multiple different systems, multiple spreadsheets. So they've got no way of uh, assessing uh, opportunities where they're moving to. Uh, this happens quite a lot in the tech industry where they're, we're not, they're not using an effective CRM. Um, and the third problem is, is that they don't communicate or make an offer to their existing customers uh, as, often as, they, as often as they should and they believe to. They take a long time to come up with a strategy and then execute on a strategy. And by the time they get any feedback or a result, it's way down the track. So the way we solve that problem in that market is imagine we can put all the data in one place. Imagine we can actually assess opportunities and speed up the sales process. And more importantly, imagine if we can test the market and offer and engage and pre-sell to the market um, so that we can leverage our sales more effectively. So if we could do those three things for your business in that market, is it worth sitting down having a chat how we can solve that problem? Now, anytime we've asked that question of the market, and we have, well, I've got sales guys that do this, anytime that we've asked that question of the market, the customer said, yeah, we need to do this. We need to have a look at this because we're talking to the key problem that the market is looking for. If you're dealing with the health niche and the health niche needs patients, and you can sit and say, what's the biggest problem you have in patients? Referrals are drying up. Uh, you know, uh, it's up and down. You know, sometimes days we get great appointments. Some days we get no appointments. Uh, sometimes our marketing isn't working. So we don't know what's working. We don't know what is working. So if I had a way to consistently bring patients to your business from your local market that you can sit there and actually count, qualify and quantify a return and have those people book an appointment and put themselves in a chair in your health practice, is that something that you're interested in? It's a direct question to the relatable problem they're having. If I could make your marketing and ROI work better than what it is right now, where you can actually you can actually see that you're getting those clients and seeing those dollars in your bank account, would that be useful to you? It's a really simple question that you ask. It's really hard for people to say no to something that they're actually wanting and, want, and looking for. The next step is how are we gonna do that in that process? So if I know what the three problems are that I solve in any market, then I can create my uh, 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 offering. I can create my action points to get into those markets. Uh, a lot easier. It makes it more relevant. It makes it really easy for people to say, yeah, I need to look at something like that. What most people do is they'll say very generic things and you don't really stand out from the crowd, right? But if you think about what I've just shared with you, uh, understand that this is an opportunity where the more clear you are about how they get a result and you solve their problem, the easier it is for them to say, hey, let's talk or let's sit down. We need to do something like this. So that's, that's a key part of that process. The next thing is why clients three most desired objectives. What do they want the most? Um, the first thing that they want the most is they want to see an increase in revenue, right? They want an increase in, in revenue. They want a steady increase or they want a consistent increase in revenue. They want to look at ways in which that they can actually have some level of predictability in their market. They also want to look at ways of being able to um, actually give it to somebody else to take care of it for them because they don't have the skills or the people in-house to be able to do that for them. So what are their number one objectives? And I like to find out why those objectives are important. So if I was look, talking to a removalist company and a removalist company uh, might sit and say, hey, you know, we just bought two trucks, right half we've got two crews running those trucks, that's gonna cost us another $200,000 each. We need to pick up, you know, another four to $500,000 in revenue so that we make sure we're in profit because we've got two more vehicles on the road. So their objective is we've got to bring in enough clients or sales right, so that we can grow with the expansion of bringing trucks on the road, right? So that's, that's their desired objective. Then it might be, well, how much, how, many, how much more sales do you want, right? How many more sales? Now, for some people, it's really funny. Uh, there's a figure that gets bandied out and around, but, and I use this, and we use this in one of the agencies that I work with. We'll say to you and say, look, if we can send you 30 patients, 30 patient inquiries every single month, guaranteed, are you in for that? Because that's 30 people that they get to speak to that put up their hand and say, I'm interested in buying uh, in, in you helping with, with your service. Maybe 30 people every single month guaranteed to put up their hand. My next question is how many of those will become patients? 
Now, if they said half, well, that's 15 patients. If their plan of care, or if they're providing some form of plan of care that's between $1,000 and $2,000, that's between $15,000 and $30,000 in revenue that they pick up consistently every single month. And over a period of a year, that's up to, that's uh, between $180,000 and $360,000 worth of revenue. And then over the next three years, that they keep doing the same thing with 30 uh, opportunities every month, that's nearly a million dollars worth of revenue that you generate for a business if all you're saying is, if I can just bring you 30 patients every single month that are inquiring about your services. So notice that I'm working or dealing with the, the objective, the desired objective that the actual business is looking for. It doesn't matter what business you choose. If you understand their desired objective and you have a strategy to help them achieve the desired objective, it's really easy for you to generate an appointment, right? So next thing, just very quickly moving on because we've got a lot of stuff to cover. Picking your niche markets. This is a question that I often get asked the most. And first of all, I want to say, and I'm not being uh, rude when I say this, this is the dumbest question that I get asked. John, what's the best niche that I can go after? That is, if you were to say, to ask me those questions, I'm going to give you a flippant answer. My flippant answer is uh, anybody that needs customers, Anybody needs those customers to spend some money while, they get, while they're there and anybody needs to keep those customers buying more often and have lifetime value. So tell me which niche needs more customers, needs those customers to spend as much money as possible while they're there and needs those customers to keep buying, keep coming back and buying more or referring customers to them. Tell me a specific niche. That's every business on the planet, right? All you've got to do now in every market, I know Balls is laughing at me, in every market, now here's the thing, um, uh, in every market, there are different levels of business. You've got the dominant player, which are the top 5% in any industry. They're the dominant uh, big companies. You've got the medium players. To me, they're very attractive because they're being eaten from the top down and from the bottom up. So big players are trying to take middle players, top customers, and little players are trying to take the middle players, bottom lower customers for themselves. So middle market companies are, are really good target markets because they're great for, for marketing to targeted customers. Middle, middle based companies are awesome because they've got cash flow uh, and they're desperately looking for customers, right? So if you said to me, what niche, then who needs, you know, if I was doing Facebook, who does business to consumer, right? B2C, who is selling products, services directly to consumer? That's Facebook. Any, and then my question is who needs a lot of it? Who needs tons of inquiries, e-commerce websites, service-based businesses, financial services, trade services, contractors, uh, manufacturers, product-based businesses. They need lots and lots and lots of people coming to them inquiring about the product. So who needs, that's going to determine your niche because if you're there to deliver customers through Facebook and let's say it's e-commerce businesses that you can do really well with, then you want to be speaking to, you want to say to people, I've got a strategy that gets you a ton of customers that are interested in going to your buy now page and buying your product, right? What type of result that you're going to get or what's the, the focus of the lead gen? If it's B2B, then you're an AdWords specialist because a lot of B2B happens on AdWords and things like LinkedIn because they're looking for people who are searching um, on, on the internet. So uh, who are the B2B businesses? Office equipment, um, supplies. Uh, there's so many different B2B, manufacturing, pharmaceutical, engineering, construction. There's lots of B2B businesses that, that require strategy online, right? Um, the same thing is uh, if I was looking at people who need lots and lots of phone calls, who needs phone calls? People who've got sales teams, people who've got call centers, they need lots of phone calls. Who's got call centers and sales teams that you can go after? Because those people are desperately looking for your help to get them more leads. That's what they want. So picking niche markets, there's only three caveats I like. Do I like the market? Do I like working with them? Because if you want pick a niche market, you're going to go all in. You want to like them, right? In the niche market that I work in the health services, I like the niche. They're really nice people. They're trying to build some great businesses. Um, and I know that we get them awesome results. So do we like them? That needs a must. Can I help them? Can I help them get a result? That's the only question I've got to answer, right? If this market is there, can I help them get the results? And the last one that you need to know, which is really important, is will they pay? Right, that's the most important one to you is will they pay you for your services? Now, let me tell you, it's getting more and more competitive and it's getting more and more expensive to market online. It's not getting cheaper, it's getting more expensive because people are starting to throw lots of money. And if you look at Google, the way it's structured, if you look at Facebook, the way it's structured now, it's working to he who has the most money or he who bids the most wins. Right, so it's getting more and more pricey to get sales. So picking a niche market, 
be specific. Do you like them? Can I help them? Will they pay? That's all you need to know. If you're struggling, pick three, right? And then out of the three, eliminate one. And then out of the two, flip a coin. And before you catch yourself, the one that you thought in your head that you'd like to work with, that's your niche market. That's how you get your, that's how you pick your niche, right? So pick three markets. I'll, do, I'll go through it again for those of you who are watching. Pick three markets, right? A friend of mine, Taki Moore, uh, reminded me of this not so long ago. Pick three markets. Then of the three, eliminate one. And then when you've got two left, get a coin, heads for one market, tails for the other market. Flip the coin. And before, don't look at the coin. Before you look at the coin, whichever market you, you would like that to be, that's your niche. That's how you pick your niche market. So you'll never have to, you'll never have a problem in picking niche markets from now on because you know what to pick, right? Um, so I just want to give you perspective. The most effective lead generation methods today, this study was completed early this year. Um, it was a, a group of uh, studies that were put together. Pace Setter is where this chart comes from, but Forrester Marketing, sorry, Forrester Consulting and Jupiter uh, Research put these stats together for these numbers. When I first saw this chart, this blew me away. I was actually quite surprised. When I say I was surprised, um, I was surprised that there wasn't more inbound marketing uh, resulting in sales. However, 39% of all agency sales happen through outbound marketing, email, telemarketing, uh, through campaigns that people follow up, direct sales. That's where 39% of the sales are made right now. And 27% of the sales are made through trade show, webinars, events, conferences, those sorts of things. So more than 61% of sales is made through outbound and direct engagement. Uh, if you look at online, only 17% of sales are made online. Uh, traditional TV, ra uh, TV ad and radio, only about 10%. Facebook only accounts for 5% of all the, all the business generated for agencies in the market. Uh, other strategies, 2%. 5%, I thought Facebook was huge for business, but it's not. It's not where the money is, is outbound direct. I'm going to show you a couple of strategies in a moment, how you can go direct to market. So, um, and what I'm, and here's the thing. Uh, if I look at the most successful agencies that I work with and, and uh, uh, Ball Deep knows this, uh, if Nick, who's part of the, the, the BS No Bullshit group, owes uh, your group. Um, they, these are people that I work with closely. The reason why they're successful is because they are actually aggressively going outbound to their customers. They're using outbound strategies to aggressively market, and that's why they're growing their businesses to multiple six and seven figures, right? If I look at my bigger agencies, I look at what we do, we spend more time aggressively going outbound than inbound. If I look at my agency, we do more outbound than inbound um, because that's how we grow really fast. So the idea is to look at the strategy and the systems around outbound, and I'm not talking about cold calling. I'm not talking about cold calling when I talk about this, right? I'm just talking about engaging the market quickly and creating really short sales cycles. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, so lead sources. People often ask me, where can I get leads? On the internet, there's this website, apparently elusive from everybody. Nobody's ever heard this website. It's got a really funny name. It's called Google, right? Let me say that again. It's called Google, G-O-O-G-L-E, right? If you go to this hidden website from the world, you can actually type in lists lead lists, top 10, top 5,000, top 100, any industry niche, industry associations. You can go to multiple, I went, I'm actually doing this exercise myself because I'm testing uh, a strategy. I shared this the other day. I'm sending out, I'm targeting a very specific market. I'm sending out 35 emails, cold, straight from a list that I found on the internet. I just literally went and found the, the leads on the internet by looking and I found the people in that market and I'm sending the emails out. Uh, and I just wanted to test if my email would work right? Uh, I sent that email out yesterday and I've had three responses so far, um, which is really interesting, right? I'm going to share a little bit about the idea in, in just a moment. So um, top 5,000 publications, magazine, industry, industry journals, both online and offline. Uh, if you want to work with high-end clients, and here's a tip, there's a magazine in the United States, it's called The Rob Report, R-O-B-B Report. You can buy it in any newsstand. And generally, it's covered in plastic because that magazine is purely designed for rich people to buy stuff at really ridiculously expensive prices. You can buy chocolate for a million dollars on the Rob Report. You can buy islands, you can buy boats, you can buy ridiculous cars. You can buy a $150,000 Porsche and then go and spend another $300,000 customizing your Porsche. That's what you can do on the Rob Report. So all these businesses are looking for clients at high end. They've got high ticket sale, high end sales. 
I actually engaged the company out of the Rob Report that sold speakers. The average sale for a pair, not one speaker, a pair of speakers, $4 million. $4 million bucks for a pair of speakers. I helped that company generate $54 million in speaker sales, right, uh, just by reaching out to them and, and helping them out with email marketing, right? So Rob Report, high-end, high, high cost services, lots of customers that you can go to in those markets. Online aggregators, House, High Pages, DMB, Hoovers, Yelp, Manta, USA.com. There's all these aggregator websites. House.com has the largest contractor base for uh, construction uh, and home design and building. Uh, they've got 3,900,000 members on that site that you can literally scrape. And here's a tip. The top 20 listings are the ones that you want to target, not the ones after the top 20, because the top 20 listings are actually paying to be there, right? So they're spending money on marketing, ideal target market audience. Uh, data listings, Compass, Compass is one of my favorite because it actually gives you managing directors. It'll even give you managing director emails when you dig into niche markets. We've got Manta, A to Z Business Guide. If people say to me, John, I can't get this information, there's this little place in every city, everywhere, they, actually some cities have more than one of these. In fact, some cities have several of these. It's called the public library, right? A public library, which is free to access in any city in the world. I, didn't even, I don't even have to be a local uh, to access the New York State Library in New York when I was there the other day. I actually went into New York State Library to see if they had this listing. They have a thing called the A to Z Business Guide. It's You can access it through the library's access online. And it shows you companies, how much turnover, how many employees, uh, all that sort of stuff you can get. Niche market, you can see how much companies spend money on advertising and marketing, all kinds of rubbish. So if you went to your local library and looked up the A to Z Guide, the library systems in the United States actually have a subscription to this because it's not free. And you can literally download PDFs of data if you wanted to or email yourself PDFs of data if you go to access in the library computers. It's free. Amazing. Uh, LinkedIn groups, uh, also a great place to generate leads. Uh, both to And one thing I will say about LinkedIn, I don't want to go into deep detail about strategy, but one thing, thing I will say about LinkedIn, if you make connections on LinkedIn, don't communicate with people inside LinkedIn. Get their emails and email them outside of LinkedIn because inside of LinkedIn, people are not there all day. They're not there every day. They're not watching their emails. They're not responding. Sometimes people are lucky if they go into LinkedIn once a month, right? So it's better to go direct than actually use the LinkedIn process to generate generate sales. But it is a, is a place where you can find customers. Uh, this is the Inc. 5000 list. The reason why I love this list, it gets, it's changed every year. The average company grows uh, here at about 400%. <laughs> My question on this list, is who is not on this list. But the beauty of this list is you can target, like you'll notice here on the right-hand side, uh, left-hand side, if you can actually see it, <clears throat> doing an advanced search, I can target companies that are doing $12 million worth of revenue to uh, $1 billion or $2 million revenue to $5 million worth of revenue, and it'll give me the listing of all those companies. It'll also break down the niches of those companies, tell me how many employees they got, how much turnover they got, uh, you know, what they're doing. So it's a great resource to find customers. One of the guys that I work with, Jasper Brown, started his consulting agency selling AdWords with an $8,000 management fee to three advertising agencies on this list. He got his first three clients, made 24 grand a month in, in management fees. I'll just say that again, $8,000 a month in management fees for AdWords. That's what he was charging, plus ad spend. Never his first three, first three customers, right? Uh, and he did that in less than six weeks, right? Just off this list. Uh, there's also a European list. So there's 5,000 companies in Europe. You can designate them by country, by state, by city, by category. You can actually break it down. It's a great list. I actually have had this list scraped many times, um, but great source of business. So sweet spots to target. You want CEOs, founders, managing directors of people you want to speak to, five to $10 million companies. If, depending on what your packages are and what you sell, I, I would, you know, if you're selling something for two grand a month or three grand a month, I, I would go as low as $2 million million and a half would be my lowest. Uh, but I like companies at five million because if you're going to offer a service at 30 or 40 grand a year, they, it's a no brainer for them to sign up. If you're going to offer a service at 50 grand a year, it's a no brainer for people to sign up. If you're offering a service at $100,000 a year, it's a no brainer for $5 million to $10 million companies to sign up because it is a small percentage of their marketing budget. I'm looking for marketing budgets of 250K to 500K. So companies at five to 10 million have marketing budgets of 250K to 500K. They would not grow to that level if they didn't have the, they wouldn't be that size if they didn't have those budgets. 
right? Uh, companies that need to feed sales teams, any company or business that's got sales teams, they're the ones that I would go after because they, what they want is they want leads, 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 leads. Companies that need lots of traffic to their websites, they want lots of lookers and inquirers on their websites. They're the companies that I want to chase and target because I want to see, you know, companies that need 50, 60,000 visitors on a website, excuse me, while I do that, uh, they need strategies to improve their conversions. They need SEO, they need uh, 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 conversion rate optimization, they need Facebook advertising, they need to drive customers to their websites. So that's an indicator of the type of companies that I would target, right? So fast direct strategy, this is for all you guys. There's a system that's a strategy that I've used for years. It works brilliantly for me and it's worked for heaps of people who that I've worked with. Even Balls uses this idea. Um, so it's a four email sequence, it's really simple. The intro offer, the second email is, did you get what I sent you? The third email is, love to know what you thought about my offer. The fourth email is, are you interested in what I'm offering you? Right, so I'm gonna show you an email that you can use very in a second, right? The second thing, if I'm emailing people, I'm following them up. I'm not leaving the opportunity out there. It's ridiculous to leave the opportunity out there, right? Most people never follow up. That's why they're not, they don't make any money. So one of the things, if you are doing cold email strategies, is one of, I recommend that you turn on your notifications on your phone, on your mobile phone. If you turn on your mobile phone notifications, anybody that replies yes to your email saying, yes, I'd like to schedule a time with you, pick up the phone and call and schedule a time. Don't wait a day, don't wait two days, pick them up as soon as you get the notification because it means they're reading your email, they like what you've said and they want, they're want. they interested. So hit, hit them at the point of interest, you'll make lots of appointments. What most people do is they wait a day or two days or three days, Balls is probably nodding his head right now, he's saying, I've done this, you know, when you, and then you're trying to chase people down, right? Uh, and you never get the appointment or it's too hard to get them on the phone or whatever. Have a notification on your phone on this, most, I'm gonna talk about this in a moment. Most important computer in the world is this, right? So turn your email notifications. If somebody replies yes, pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, let me help you make that appointment. Let me talk to you about what I, what I made an offer, right? Uh, the other way to do this is provide high value content, case studies, videos on strategies and tactics, industry specific reports, business analysis, anything that you offer as an idea to engage people that you can do these sorts of things with direct, uh, with direct emails or with direct communication. Uh, the strategy that I've often used is if I've got a piece of content or something that's key that I know that would be a benefit to a market, what I usually do is I get somebody to call them first and say, listen, do you want this? I don't send it willy-nilly out to everybody. I say, listen, we're not giving this to everybody, but we want to know if people are interested. Do you want this? If you want this, the only caveat we place on the idea that we're sharing with you or the thing that we're sharing with you is that we can actually follow it up and get your feedback on it. Will you accept our offer? That's it. I could do 10 of those a day, right? But that means now I've got 10 people that I've got interested in talking about the idea of helping them out, right? So then the idea is play the follow-up game, okay? So uh, high value content always wins. Uh, if I look at Will, one of the guys that I work with uh, out of Australia, he's got clients all over the world. Last two months, he's generated 10 clients per month. Average client is spending between $5,000 and $10,000 a month on advertising and email marketing with his services. You imagine signing up 10 clients a month, two months, three months in a row now. Three months in a row, 10 clients a month at five to 10K recurring. 75% conversion rate off cold email, purely because he's providing content that is relevant to the market. I'm gonna show you a, a strategy here in a moment to, to demonstrate the point, okay? So uh, this, is a really email, this is a simple email that I've put together. Now you can change this to anything you want. I'm gonna read email out to you. For those of you who can't see my screen, I'm going to read the email out. I'm going to read it out slowly so you can copy it. But what I would encourage you to do is to adapt it. Now, this market, uh, I pick on accountants because I can. They're easy to pick on. Um, <laughs> but I have done a lot of work in the financial markets, uh, financial industries and the strategic uh, planning in financial industries. So I kind of know this market a little bit. So uh, I put this email together. I'm actually testing this at the moment. Uh, and you can do this too, but there's a caveat. I'm gonna make some, there's a, some adjustments and changes that you can make and I'll explain the email, right? So here's the email, I'll read it out to you. Hi Bob, quick question as a subject line. Hi Bob, can I share a system that can get up to 30 audit client inquiries per month? Can I share that with you, right? If you're interested, just reply yes to this email. I specialize in targeting high value customers for, account, for the accounting industry. 
here is a link to a strategy that we can generate great clients for your practice or that, that we know can generate great clients for your practice. Now, I won't necessarily leave that line in. If I've got, if I don't have the content, I won't leave the line in, right? So I'll take that out and say, I'll just leave it from, I specialize in targeting high value customers for your industry. And then go straight to, if you're looking for clients that want to invest three to 10K in your services, I'd like to send, send some your way, right? Looking forward to talking to you. Now there's in the brackets here, I will put, I know you're busy, right? But can we get on a call and see if this will be helpful to your practice, to your accounting practice, right? I'm telling him I want to get on the call. I'm being proactive, right? If he replies yes to me on the on my phone, I will respond to him straight away by picking up the phone and say, hey, thanks for responding to the email. Let's make a time. I will get past the gatekeeper because I can say to the gatekeeper, hey, Bob just emailed me asking me to set a time. Can you put me through? Just let him know it's John, right? I'll have no problem getting through the gatekeeper and this is a fast way of getting an appointment with Bob. Remember, it has to be relevant to him. What do accounting clients want? This is audit. Now, audit services for an accounting firm could be anywhere between 50000 30000 to $400,000. It's high value for accounting firms. So are they interested in getting 30 inquiries for audit work? I would imagine most auditing firms would be very interested in that sort of work. Uh, can I show you, is it okay if we have a chat about it? You know, I might catch him at the right time and he might say yes, right? So it's a really simple email you can write. I would make some changes. Don't, it doesn't make sense the way I've done it. I've put inclusions here for you to give you options, right? So this is, if I was doing, I'm do, actually doing this right now. As we speak, I sent these, uh, sent some of these emails out. Uh, already getting replies, right? So then I would follow up with a phone call, okay, to do that. Now, here's another way of doing exactly the same thing, right? If you know you've got a strategy that's gonna get a certain number, a certain amount of results, you know that it, it works, right, to get results. And you know roughly what it's gonna cost. Uh, if, if Let's say we're doing Facebook advertising and we know if a customer spends about $1,000, we can get them between 30 and 50 leads. We know that we can do that, right? Uh, we know that the industry standard is that, right? Even if I'm running a campaign that I know they can do that, I want to talk about that campaign, right? So here's a direct offer that you can make to people. Uh, and let's say, uh, let's say, let's pick a trade service. So let's, uh, let's pick a, a, a floor covering, you know, timber floors, right? <clears throat> so, hey, Bob, I've got a strategy that I know that can bring up to 30 timber floor inquiries to your business every single month. I just want to know if you're interested in, have, interested in having a talk about it, right? We specialize in generating customers that are directly interested in, in inquiring about floor covering and floor services. And we have a system that we know that we can replicate and generate a consistent flow of customers or customer inquiries to your business. Uh, I know you're busy, uh, but can we get on the phone? Can we go on a call and see if this will be helpful to your flooring business, right? That's how we'll do it for a flooring company. Right now, if I was making a direct offer, so for example, and I'm going to give you some uh, results here in a moment. If I was making a direct offer, I would make a money offer. So if I had a list, it didn't wouldn't matter if it was a familiar list or if I had a scrape list or I had some even a, even I had a past customer list. I don't care if this list is five people or a hundred people or a thousand people. It doesn't matter, right? Small lists work really well. Big lists work really well. So here's a direct offer, right? Right now. Uh, I'm just reaching out to you. I was about to spend a whole bucket load of money on advertising and I thought I'd give the money to you instead. We're redesigning websites for people right now and our team have got two openings to work on two projects. Normally we would charge fifteen dollars to $20,000 to build a website with these components. What we're offering today, if you're interested, is $8,000. We'll design a site and link it up to your email, uh, email account. If you're interested, just let me know, yes or no. Uh, if not, I hope we can work on a future project with you. That's the offer, right? Right now, we're doing this. We normally charge this. We're making an offer of this, right? Now, I have a website dude who did that. Sold four websites in 24 hours where people say, yes, I'll take the deal. And he wasn't offering $8,000 websites. He was offering $16,000 websites. He normally charges 30 and he said, I'll do it for 16, <clears throat> right? So understand it's a direct offer that you can make to the market. Now, if we were doing it for AdWords, you could set up a package where you say, hey, uh, I was about to spend a ton of money on advertising promotion to get clients. I thought I'd give you the money instead. We will give you $1,000 towards setup of your campaign and we can get that up and running for you in the next, uh, next 72 hours. Are you interested? 
Now, you're not going to give them a thousand dollars because you're going to help them set up a campaign anyway. I would still charge for the campaign. I would charge three to four thousand dollars for the campaign and take a thousand dollars off to set it up. But the customer thinks they're getting a perceived value in what you're offering. You're not tricking them. You're not ripping them off. You're not doing anything shady. What you are doing is you're highlighting the value of your time. It's like if I was a graphic designer and I was doing user interface design, I would sit there and say, listen, normally do $5,000 upfront for a user interface. If you decide to, to, to go ahead with us, we'll give you $1,500 towards your design. Would you like to take advantage of my $1,500 cash? Right? So it's another way of doing the same sort of offer. If you can make a direct offer, say, hey, I've got space. We can do this. We normally would do this. We're giving it to you for this. Or here, we would like to contribute this. If you're interested, just let me know. Right? For your service. That's a great strategy. Okay. I mean, most of the guys watching have Facebook ad agencies. So just think about yep. all the people that you've actually spoken to in the past two or three months. Haven't signed yep. up at all. Put it, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm going to set up an offer to all the people that came in that I spoke to, even that just yep. inquired on my ads and just put out that yep. offer. Tell, tell yep. them, hey, we're going to waive the setup fee or waive, uh, give a discount of $500 on the first month, whatever it is, and put that offer out there. And if you got one or two clients, once you get them on the hook for that first month, it's going to be much easier to retain them month after month. Absolutely. Um, so best offers, teach people what you know. Can I, sit, can I sit down and show you how you can get this result? It's the number one way to get clients. Teach people how to get a result. They're interested in the results. One-on-one -on -one training. Um, you can provide one-on-one -on -one training with people and say, hey, normally we charge $1,000 or $5,000 to train people in this. Uh, we'll give it to you for two. Uh, we'll sit down and show your people how to do this. And generally what will happen is they tend to ask you, look, can you do this for us? We don't want to do this in house, right? Uh, Facebook Lives, uh, using Facebook Lives in other people's communities uh, with the permission of the organizer, as long as you're adding value, is a great way to get clients. Uh, you know, uh, I've done this where I had a particular person that had a closed group community, invited me in. I said, you know, this was a business group, uh, invited me in. I said, look, let's show them how to get results. And at the end of that, let's partner up and make a deal. Uh, you know, we generated in, in just in, in the partnership, they picked up 50 grand cash in the partnership, right? But it exposed me to a whole bunch of clients in the marketplace. So Facebook Lives and other people's groups work brilliantly. LinkedIn events, training for association groups. One of the consultants I work with, uh, a couple of my consultants that I work with actually get paid to do live training webinars to teach people how to get results with marketing online. Uh, Chris, one of the guys that I work with in the United Kingdom, he gets paid $1,500 a week, $1,500 to put on a webinar for an association, manufacturing association. He gets five clients a month out of that. He provides SEO services where they're charging uh, about 5,000 pounds up a month for their, uh, for their SEO services. Uh, evergreen lead magnet video landing page, these all work, but they take time. If you're doing inbound marketing, it takes time to develop the strategy. It takes time to execute, um, but it does work. Run ads, right? I'm going to show you that you, something you can do really super fast. Live events, business groups, conferences, networking events, fastest way to get customers. Now, here's the thing. Remember I said that I was going to give you a pitch on how you can get five to 20, five to 15 appointments. Uh, I said that at the beginning of the training. I've said that a couple of times. I'm going to share that pitch with you right now. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to share it as if I was, I was delivering it, right? Um, and explain why it works really well, right? It's really simple, okay? So to do this pitch, you have to go to a live event. You have to go to a networking event of some kind, a meetup, entrepreneurs group, business group, BNI, Chamber of Commerce, uh, uh, Rotary, wherever a group asks you to stand up and introduce yourself to the group, right? If you, this is only if you want fast clients. These don't have to be big clients. Uh, I did this strategy uh, and we generated $500,000 of revenue in uh, six weeks doing this, doing exactly what I'm about to tell you, right? So, and as I said, there are people out there doing this right now and picking up points. I had one guy nine, another guy five, another guy three, another guy 12, another guy 15 over three events in a week, uh, just getting clients for their services by using this simple pitch. This is what you're going to do. You're going to go to, and preferably at breakfast. Bref breakfast are good because early in the morning, lots of decision makers go to breakfast. People who go to evening and lunchtime events, not mostly not decision makers. People who are running companies are busy. Breakfast is easy. It's on the way to work, right? So I always go make sure that the networking event is a breakfast event. 
So here's the pitch. <clears throat> what you're going to be doing is you're going to be invited to say something to introduce yourself to the group. Now, the mistake that most people make is say, hi, I'm Bob and I'm an SEO provider. And what we do is we help people get more traffic to their website. If you know anybody that needs more traffic to the website, call me, right? That's what they say, right? You've probably heard it a million times if you've ever done this. And let me tell you, it's better to do this in person. It's better to go out to the market. I'll give you, I just want to give you all a tip before I give you the pitch. I know everybody's hanging out for the pitch right now. I'm just keeping a bit of suspense here for you. Uh, but here's the thing. I have a lot of friends. I have some, some, some great friends in the business of online. Ryan Levesque, James Shremko, Ezra Firestone. Uh, these are some of my friends. I'm in masterminds with them. We hang out with each other. We all do business. And they do mega, mega dollars online, right? But here's the thing. The number one strategy that they have to generate clients is face-to-face. -face. They meet up with their audience. They hold live events. They spend hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars holding live events to be face-to-face -face with their customers. Why do you think the biggest marketers on the planet want to face-to-face -face their customers? The answer is it's the way that they are able to relate, connect, and generate more sales. Right. That's how they that they're still even though they're teaching you do the whole thing online, they do a lot of stuff online. But their most successful strategies is eyeballing their customers. And so they're still doing face to face. They're still doing sales calls. You know, Frank, uh, who just gave away mind control, which is Frank Kern I'm talking about, just gave away mind, mind control as a strategy to get people in his membership group where you're paying four dollars a month and you get access to all these programs and all these things you still have to hop on a call to talk to him. He will talk to people who are interested in joining the group, you know, with Frank. You can, if you want to talk to Frank, go and apply, do an application for one of Frank's programs and you'll get to talk to Frank Kern, right? But let me tell you, you're going to be buying something after that phone call, right? But, it, but, the, but the reason I'm saying this is they're still engaging the audience face-to-face. -face. They still go to events. They still know that, 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 Connecting with people directly is one of the fastest ways and effective ways to generate sales. So getting back to the ultimate pitch that I've been sharing with you. So you're going to go to an event. You're going to preferably a breakfast where they introduce you. It doesn't matter if you're at a table of eight, if you're in a group of 20, generally, generally these meetings are like 20 to 30 people and the first 20 minutes or half an hour is spent introducing ourselves. So here's what you're going to do. You're not going to say, hi, I'm Bob and I do Facebook ads for people in business and I get customers off Facebook for you. You are not going to say that to people. All right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to praise the organizer of the event first for holding a great event and inviting great people to the event. So here's how the pitch is going to go. I just want to say thank you to Terry over here because this group is amazing um, and he's put together an awesome group. I know a lot of effort and work goes into putting these groups together. So I want to say thanks, Terry, and I really appreciate being here. Second thing is I just want to ask you all a question. Who here actually needs a customer uh, to put up their hand that it's, when they're putting up the hand says that, please help me buy your product or service. Who here, just put up your hand, if you need customers coming to you regularly, putting up hands saying, please help me uh, buy, your, buy your product or service, or can you let me know a little bit more about your product or service uh, uh, with, the, with the interest of me maybe buying it? Who wants that in the room? Every single person is gonna put up their hand. If you're in a room of 20 people, business people, 20 business people are gonna put up their hand. If you're in a room of 40 business people, 40 people are going to put, put, their hand, put their hand up to that. Who needs a customer that, is, that puts up their hand, is directly interested in your product or service to buy? Now, the, my next question is, um, who here, right? Or I'm actually got a couple of questions here. My next, I just want to just get clear here. Who here is running a reputable business, understands that it's important to invest in your marketing, and more importantly, that you will do everything humanly possible to help a customer buy your product or service. Who here will do that? Every single person will put up their hand. So let me ask you this question. The purpose of marketing is to generate a return on investment and making sure that the dollars you spend are coming back to you so that you create an opportunity for growth. So I'm gonna ask you people here, if you gave me $1 and I gave you $5 back, who would be interested in that type of marketing strategy? Now, nearly every single person will put up their hand, right? So what I'm gonna share with you, that if you're really serious about that, if you're reputable and you, uh, you understand the investment, that marketing is important, that you're investing in your business is important, and you will help the customers 
that are interested in buying your product or service to help them buy, right? If you gave me a buck and I gave you five back, who would be interested in knowing exactly how that strategy works in this room? Every single person will put up their hand and this is the close. Before you leave here today, make sure you give me your card and I will show you how to get a five to one for your marketing. And more importantly, I'm gonna show you how you can get customers that are highly targeted, that are putting up their hand, who want you to help buy. So if you're keen to do that, please give me your card before you leave. That's the pitch, right? Now, who here believes that we get no business cards from that pitch, <laughs> right? I, do you think that you will walk out of that room without everybody, without somebody, with a handful of people who would give you their card to say, yeah, let's have a talk? Now, in that pitch, did I say I was providing SEO or Facebook or AdWords or web design or sales funnels? I didn't even mention the words uh, of marketing, right? Mention the, th the services, right? That comes from the conversation that you will generate from those appointments, right? Do you want me to do the pitch again? Just so I've got it clear here. So the first question you can ask is who here in this room, right? It wants a customer who puts up their hand and says, I am interested in buying your product or service. Can you help me buy? Who wants customers like that in this room? Every single person will put up their hand, right? Second question, which is a group. Who here runs a reputable business, understands that it's important to invest in their marketing, and more importantly, will do anything possible to make sure that they help a customer buy? Who would do that, right? Everybody's gonna put up their hand, great. So if there was a system or a strategy where you put in a dollar and you got $5 back, right? Who wants their marketing to give a 5X return for every dollar you spend in the room? Who believes that would be a good deal? Everybody put up their hand. So here's the thing. Before I leave here today, if you give me a card, I will show you, I'll make a time with you and I will show you exactly how you can go and get a five to one on your marketing. But more importantly, I'm going to show you a strategy, a system, a structure where you can attract that customer that's putting up the hand saying, please help me buy your product. If you want to do that, make sure you give me your card before you leave. I will guarantee you that you will get business from that group. Now, some of those businesses might not be your ideal customer, but some of those businesses, especially B2B, might work with ideal customers that you can get generate referrals from, right? As I said, I did that over a six week period. I generated 180 contacts. I sold 25 clients and generated $500,000 worth of business out of that strategy. And I've been sharing this with a few people now to test it out. And people have never done anything like that in their lives are walking, walking out with appointments, right, for their marketing services. So if you want some cash, get to a networking meeting this week or get to a breakfast meeting as, as quickly as you can. <laughs> That'll put cash in your bank account. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't mean to cough in your ear. How are we going? Are people still engaged? We got a lot of people. Uh, yeah, we got about yep. 30. Two people watching right now. Um, guys, yeah. again, uh, some questions have come in and we'll get to those later. So if you're watching uh, biznotbs.com forward slash questions, there should be a link in whatever stream you're watching to ask any questions. John will spend some time after the presentation to answer any and all questions. So make them, make them hard, put them on the spot. Um, but yeah, this is great stuff, guys. Pay attention. Um, go ahead, John. Okay, so next strategy is this, this is a Fiverr video, right? Uh, that basically was a walkthrough. Now, the person who put this video together did not have, uh, had a, a very heavy accent, a very heavy Latino accent. So in presenting the idea uh, to help people get a result for the services, he was very reluctant to do, use his voice as part of the case study. So he hopped on Fiverr and found somebody who had a great accent, right, uh, to do the video for him. And it's an explainer video. And it says, basically it talks about how a leading fitness equipment company increased their revenue and sales by more than 96% by automating their marketing processes. So what they did was they reverse engineered, this wasn't their client, and they're not saying that they're client. They reverse engineered a successful strategy, and then what they did was they sent an email out to people and say, do you wanna know about this? And it's a three, it's a five minute uh, video, right? A company in Italy, one of the largest fitness equipment manufacturing in the companies in the world, called my consultant, to say, we want to do that strategy. How do we do that strategy, right? That engagement was worth $250,000 off this little video that was made from Fiverr, 
and explain a video, <laughs> right? And all they did was run email traffic to the video. Uh, they got lots of inquiries. People say, yeah, they want to know more. I would use this strategy a little bit differently. If I was going to, I would ask people, can I send this to you uh, first? If, they, if I get a yes, then yes. I'll send it to them. The only caveat that I place is, can I get feedback on what you thought about what you saw? If I look at one of the guys I work with, Mark, this is all he does. He sends people to a video page like this that explains his system on email marketing. Uh, he only targets a very specific niche within the education market. He picks up about four to five clients every month uh, doing this. Uh, and he, he basically sends an email, gets them to watch the video. Once they watch the video, he's got a conversion rate of 80% to a customer once they watch the video. So and he's selling email marketing services with a $15,000 setup. And I think there's a recurring $1,000 a month to use the service as well. So imagine setting up an email marketing campaign, one marketing campaign, he sets the same marketing campaign up for the same niche. Everybody gets the same emails, right? But he picked up four to five clients every month using this little strategy right here. It's really not that difficult to do. So results from the email campaigns. This is what happens when you do those emails I talk. I had a copywriter sold two email campaigns for $12,000. had an automation specialist who got two jobs for five grand. Web developer, three websites, 18,000. Facebook ad specialist, two clients, seven grand. Sales funnel consultant, one funnel, an $8,000 equipment funnel I sold. So a software developer sold $24,000 worth of development using this type of marketing in the market. Actions, you want to search for directory listings, you want to scrape the directory, you want to get to the decision maker's email address, not hard to do. Uh, and I'm sure we've talked about this and I know you've talked about this with your groups, balls. Uh, then you want to follow up with, uh, and you want to be, be persistent with your market. At the end of the day, it doesn't take a lot of money, right, to generate uh, the type of revenue you're looking for. I generally find if you want $100,000 in revenue and annualized revenue, you need five clients paying you two grand a month. That's it. Five clients paying you two grand a month is $120,000 a year, right? Three clients paying you three grand a month. Three clients paying you three grand a month is $108,000 of recurring revenue per year. Three, right? Uh, I know that anybody can get to a six-figure business within six weeks to, to, to 12 weeks. Six to, six to 12 weeks, you should be able to generate 10K a month on average easily, right? We generate every 90 days a million dollars worth of sales doing a sales funnel to one market. Can you imagine doing a million dollars every 30, every 90, every, sorry, yeah, every, every six, every, every uh, eight weeks to 12 weeks, we generate a million in sales. Right, so that's what's possible when you get out there and you, you make it happen. So more sales is a big thing a lot of people get into. Um, I teach this to my, my people that I work with. Uh, these are the four things that you can do every single day. Not all, you, you don't want to do all of them, just do one of them. You can make a direct offer. We talked about that a moment ago. Make a direct offer. Balls uh, just came up with the idea. I'm going to offer Facebook uh, setup as part of my uh, deal. Uh, you can make that offer today. Go and make the offer. Go and make some money tomorrow, right? Make one appointment per day. If you had all day, you could have the rest of the day to go and watch Game of Thrones, right, and, and blitz out on Game of Thrones. But if you devoted an hour, one hour, just to making an appointment for yourself, in the course of a month, that would be 20 appointments in a month. If you had 20 opportunities to sell your services to, I will guarantee all of you are going to make four to five sales out of doing that, right? Four to five sales out of doing that, okay? So, uh Teach what you know. One of the easiest ways to get clients. So, hey, would you like to know how to use autoresponders to get more sales? Hey, would you like to see how Facebook ads uh, uh, generate more sales for your business? Yeah? Right? I need to close that there. So that. So we're not bothered. So we need to look, we need to look, you know, it, it, can I show you how we could, with a simple AdWords targeting strategy, that we could generate 10 to 20 appointments for your business in the course of a month? Right? Can I teach you that? Can I show you that? If you show people, they'll generally turn around and say to you, hey, can you do this for us? It's one of the fastest and easiest ways to get customers, right? Talk to one prospect in your market to understand their business. The number one thing, and I'm going to give you an advanced tip here. If you get, if you get what I'm going to share with you in, in this next uh, two minutes, if you understand, then you will have a license to grow any business that you want the way you want to grow it, right? The biggest challenge that you have to understand for any market is the buying behavior of a customer. If you understand how a customer buys a product or a service from a market, that is gold, right? That is absolute gold. If you understand buyer behavior, it's not really hard to figure it out. All you gotta do is have a really good conversation with a few people to get, you can do the research on that hidden website called Google, 
You can figure out figure that stuff out there. Um, but if you understand this one point, if you take the time to understand how a customer buys and then align your strategy with how the customer buys, then you can go to any business in the market and say, listen, we've got a strategy that's in alignment with customer buying behavior. Would you like to see that? Right? So let me explain to you how customers buy. Right now, 70% of people use this device to search the internet, to search for products, to buy products. I've booked in the last four weeks, I've spent $5,000 buying stuff off my phone. Travel, accommodation, uh, you know, photographic equipment uh, for studios. Uh, what else did I buy? Oh, I spent $3,500 on a graphic designer, which I paid on my mobile phone, right? So if your, company, if your clients don't have a strategy to make it easy for people to buy off this thing, right, then they're screwed because this is where the market is, right? Uh, Two billion people on Facebook, one billion of those people are on Messenger every single day. One billion, right? Do you think you've got a few customers you can reach out to and put it together with a, uh, either an AdWords campaign or a Facebook Messenger campaign to get to that market? This is the number one strategy, marketing to mobile, marketing to where your customer is, right? So if that's the case, if I'm, my buyer behavior is to look, there's four things only four actions. So remember I said that if you get this, that this is the license to print money for any business in the world, right? If you just understand this and, and you can convey this, you can grow a consulting business as big as you like, right? There'll be nothing stopping you. So there are four actions in the market that people are required to do that lead to a sale on a website. The first action is that you want the customer to pick up the phone and call you, right? You want the person, the person to be able to hit the button and call, right? So the website for those businesses that need people to call need to have big numbers at the top, a big number in the middle. If you need help, call now, right? A big thing at the bottom says call, call, call. Like on the front of the page, the landing page, if you want people to call you, tell them to call you and make it easy for them to call. Put a dynamic number on your web page so that if somebody's looking at your page on a mobile device, they can just click to call or run a click to call ad and go to companies and say, listen, we just do click to call. We don't do anything else. Call in ads, right? The reason is it's a hot lead. So the first action is you want people to call. There are businesses that just want that call. They don't want opt-ins. They don't want sales funnels. Pick up the phone and call me. That's what they want, right? So if you have a strategy that is in alignment with them wanting calls and you can help them get calls, then that's the strategy. Second strategy, you want a customer to leave some details and make an inquiry because you need more information. So for example, if you're in the contracting world and you need customers to uh, give you a little bit of information so you can give them an estimate or set up a time for an estimate for their business or a quote as we have uh, called them in uh, Australia and the UK, then you want to make it easy for them to get a quote. So the top of the page, get your quote here. Middle of the page, fill this form, get your quote. Uh, maybe provide an incentive. If you buy, if you take a quote with us, we'll give you $1,000 towards your deal or whatever it is that you're selling. At the bottom of the page, make sure you get your quote here. So the second action is to fill in some information, get some data, right? And then that opens the door to inquiry. The third action is buy my stuff now. E-commerce, right? You, you drive the traffic to the website. They're looking for a specific product. You might have a little bit of a review or a description, features, benefits, other people liking this product, putting the elements in there. But you've got this thing that says buy now. Make it easy for your customer to buy. I tried to buy photographic equipment on this thing. And let me tell you, it was frustrating because they didn't make it easy to buy. Eventually, I found something that did make it easy to buy. And they ended up getting $2,000 worth of stuff, $2,000 worth of cash for me, right? So if you make it easy for people to buy now, then you're going to get a lot more buy now. Third action, right? Fourth action is I want you to rock up to my store. I've got a location. If you want to see the biggest range, here's how you find us, right? So if a customer, if a business needs, uh, has a retail location or a factory location or a showroom of any kind, their strategy, especially if it's a high ticket sale, is not to generate the call. It's come in and speak to us and we can show you our range. That's the fourth action. Who needs those types of customers? So on that website, location. Here's how you find us. Here's three locations you can see us within the next, within the 50 mile radius of where you are. Um, here's how easy it is to get to us. Here's a map, right? So the four actions, pick up the phone and call me. Second action, fill in the form, right? Uh, get an estimate. 
Third action, hit the button and buy now. Fourth action, come and come to my store and visit me, right? Here's my location, we've got the stock, right? So if your strategy is in alignment with how the customer buying behavior in those four actions, then you can go to the customer and say, listen, we know you want phone calls. That's all you want, you want calls up the wazoo, right? So we know that that's what your customers want. We wanna make sure we're gonna devise a strategy that makes it easy for them to make that phone call. In fact, we're gonna make it so easy in their search that they're gonna find you and they can just hit the button and talk to somebody. Is that the sort of strategy you want, Mr. Phone Call Business? That's how you do it, right? Uh, do you want estimates? You want a lot more estimates? Okay, let's make it easy. Let's provide an incentive or let's provide a process that makes it easy for them to give you an estimate. Let's do the quick quote on the phone. Let's do the guarantee. We'll call you in two minutes from the time that you inquire. We'll have somebody at your door, right? Whatever it is, would you like more estimates, right? I've got a strategy to do that, right? If it's B2C, I can find bucket loads of customers on Facebook, right? So third thing, buy now. Hey, number one thing, most people uh, have a system which stops people from buying. Let me show you what stops people from buying. People don't make it easy on their website or on their mobile devices to make purchasing decisions. If you want customers to buy your product directly, if there was a system and a strategy I could show you, one, where we can make this look better, and two, make it easy for the customer who's putting up the hand, wants to know the product, but they can go directly to buy now, would that be useful to you, Mr. E-commerce website? I'll guarantee you there will be not a single e-commerce business on the planet that will say no to you, right? The fourth thing is location. Hey dude, you want lots of people turning up to your showroom? You want lots of people coming in, right? If we devise a strategy to make it easy for people, one, to find you, your location, two, to know that you got the stock, and three, to make to give an incentive to come in the door, would it be worthwhile sitting down with you and showing you that strategy? Now, I couldn't care if I was a web developer, a Facebook advertiser, a sales funnel guy, I could sell all four of those things, with my services if you aligned your service with the way a customer buys. What I've just shared with you is stuff that I only talk to my highest consultants about, right? Because this stuff, this is the ninja stuff. This is the secret stuff. It's not hard, it's common sense. Most marketing is common sense, right? But, but most people can't find Google for some reason, right? So understand, understand that you've got the opportunity to engage customers. If you think that way, you are going to be a rock star. It's not hard. I've not, I have not communicated anything to you in this training so far that is not easy to implement. You can literally walk away from here today and generate sales in the next 24 hours if you follow through anything that I've shared with you today. Guaranteed. Without a doubt, you'll engage people with the ideas that I've shared, right? So understand, um, I'm just gonna get down to, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about sales here. How are we going for time, Baldiff? We cool? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. We're good? Okay. So questions you want to want answers to. I want to understand businesses. The more you understand business, the easier it is for you to sell your services. This is where most people, and I just want to be flippant here. Most people are too freaking damn lazy to make any money. They're so focused on getting all their ducks in a row, right, that they forget that the number one thing that you're going to do is if you understand your customer, make it really easy to understand. But it's really easy to approach people because if you come in with a familiar, familiarity, right, we know that the customer will open the door for you. But if you're coming in cold and saying, hey, you want, you're interested in this sort of stuff, you want some leads, blah, 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 you're just going to look like every other Yahoo out there who says exactly the same thing, right? That's no disrespect to Yahoo, who I believe are probably no longer in business. Um, but anyway, but any other, any other person on the, on the market. So I want to know what their sales process is. Uh, do they, you know, why do their customers buy from their product? Why do they go to the competition instead of going to competition? What is a customer worth to them? What's the initial sale worth? What's the average sale? What's the lifetime value? Um, how are they getting those leads? How do you get leads right now? Do you run AdWords, Facebook, magazine advertising? Do you do campaigns, media buys? How do you get your customers? How's that working for you, right? In your opinion, what's the most important thing that must happen in their business in relation to generating customers? I want to know, right? Uh, do they run regular campaigns to the existing customers? That'll give you an idea if they're actually communicating and taking advantage of revenue from their existing clients, right? Um, do they capture leads online? Do they actually capture details? And more importantly, do they run campaigns or follow up to those captures? In most cases, nada, nix, nine in three languages, right? So I understand that most people don't do this. Uh, if I sent 10 customers to you, how many of them would turn into sales? It's another question that I would ask, right? I would always ask, if I sent you 10 clients, how many convert? The average person will say, we'll get at least two in 10. So if a customer said to me, we wanna make another 10 sales, 
I would have to generate another 100 leads for them to make an extra 10 sales based on their current conversion. Or I could work on their conversion, give them half the number of leads and double their sales. Because if I can actually go from two in 10, like if I can get an extra customer, one more customer, three in 10, with a couple of conversion elements, maybe with a follow-up email sequence, maybe with a little bit of funnel, then I've effectively increased their sales by 50%. If I get two, they've doubled their sales, right? So the reason I'm sharing this with you is this is about business strategy and understanding. The more you understand how businesses work, the easier it is for you to sell your stuff, right? Uh, there's three, you know, we talk about the three ways to get business, more clients, more revenue, more often. You in your agency need to do exactly the same thing. How do you get more clients? How do you get those clients to spend as much money with you as possible when they come to you? How do you keep those clients paying every month? That's how you grow and leverage your business, right? So next thing, two, based on the answers to the questions, offer to develop a plan for them. Let me show you a plan to give you your objective. When you schedule appointment with them, so you're not gonna do a proposal, please don't do proposals, absolute waste of time to do a proposal, right? You wanna pitch them, you wanna walk them through how you're gonna help them. That means you're building that relationship. You can do that on the phone, you can do that on Skype, you can do that face-to-face. -face. I would prefer to do it on Skype because it's more leveraged, right? Or on Zoom or whatever service you wanna use, okay? So you wanna have that time to say, this is how it works. Because having that time means they can answer, ask all their questions, have all their questions answered. And then at the end of the day, as long as your plan is focused on their objective, you've got a high percentage rate of closing that deal, right? Then when you ask them, because you can ask them to make sure that they're gonna make a decision at the end of it. I'm gonna show you the diagnosis, how we're gonna do this, how we get the result. And at the end of that, I'm gonna ask you to come on board. Because if we are in alignment with your objective and you see that we're in alignment with your objective, then the only thing we've gotta do is work with each other. Is that cool? That's all we're doing here in that process, right? So. Um, strategic implementation plan. What's in the plan? You want to develop a PowerPoint or a keynote presentation. You want to have the introduction, make a clear outline of their objectives. This is why I, we. This is why this is important to us, right? So why? Why is that objective important? You know. The, so this is where you're at right now. This is what your objective is. Why is that objective important, right? What's going to happen? What's not going to happen if you don't achieve that objective, right? So then from there, we're going to. What's stopping you from doing that? What are the roadblocks? We don't know what we're doing. We don't know where the market is. We're finding it difficult to get clients. We you know, don't have enough people to handle inquiries. We need to automate our process. Whatever the reason that's stopping them from getting those sales, right? From there, uh, then ask them what's two or three. You know, here's a couple of ideas, right? That we can get that result, that objective. Then we outline the strategy. Now we don't go into how we're gonna do it. We just talk about what and why, right? And then we say, here's your investment. And then here's how you get started. So what you're doing is you're presenting to them, you're pitching to them. It shortens your sales cycle. You're getting all the feedback you need and the person can make a yes or no decision. And this can all be done on a phone, right? I've closed deals while I've been traveling and walking on beaches, just talking to people on a mobile phone, right? It's not hard to do, okay? So it means you need to know how to deliver your service, okay? So yes, no, or maybe. A maybe is a no. I want to get a yes. I want to get a no. If I hear maybe, it's a no. Don't get emotionally caught up in the sale. If you're going to follow people up, follow them up within 24 to 48 hours, right? Don't follow them up three weeks later. They'll never buy. They've forgotten about you. 48 hours after you've gone, 75% of what you told them is escape their mind. So you want to follow up within 24 hours if you have to follow up, right? Easiest question you can ask to help a customer to buy, is it okay if I show you how we can get started and implement your program, your plan? That's the easiest way to ask somebody to work with you. Is it okay if I show you how we can get started and implement your program or your plan? Right, easiest question. Uh, where do you think we should go to from here? If you've answered all the questions, you can ask, where do you think we should go? I don't know, where do we go to from here? Is it okay if I walk you through how we get started? Really simple, right? Actions. Uh, review, deliver processes uh, of your services, right? Review the delivery process of your services. Create a workflow for your project. How are you gonna help people? Work on mind map, show the mind map, show the machine. Allocate time to each step of the process, determine a budget, right? If you have a cost, whatever your physical cost in for delivery, you should 3X the price. If you're pricing on value, you should be 10X the price on value. So it's one tenth, right? So if I know that I can generate $100,000 for the client, they're paying me 10 grand a month, right? If I know that I can get them uh, $50,000 a month in sales, they're gonna pay me a minimum, minimum, they're gonna be paying me five grand a month, minimum, right? So you do a 10X value proposition, 
okay? So more leads, more sales, get the work pushed out. Uh, I'm gonna go to questions in a moment, Balls, but I wanna, you know, a lot of people, I guess, the big thing is are you ready to speed up and scale this up, right? Because uh, there's an event happening in, uh, Denver, in Denver, Colorado on the 7th and 8th of December. It's the live event uh, that we hold. I hold these events uh, 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 throughout the year. Uh, this mastermind's on the 7th and 8th of uh, September. Uh, it's uh, uh, essentially, it's a two day event that is totally focused on actioning the stuff that I've been talking about, actually doing this stuff and getting the results. It is not uncommon for people to make sales and appointments from the event that we put together. Uh, and so what I've done is I've actually put something special for this group. For those of you who are watching, you can get access to this uh, at a ridiculously stupid rate. And I'll explain why in a moment. Balls, after coming to my New York event, who's sitting here, who's invited you, uh, he, he, this was what he shared with me. In 28 days, he picked up 15 grand, right, by applying some of the stuff that we talked about and he getting clarity out of a mastermind. That's essentially what happened to Balls. Uh, Jeff, who came to our mastermind in New York, also $90,000 in, in December, 90 grand in December for SEO services, just from doing this, uh, these strategies from a live event. Dan, who I've worked with, generated a half a million dollar agency within four months doing this. Um, this is what I'm going to be talking about. And this is why you want to be in the room. Targeted niche market strategy, how to target buying niches and what to do to get in. I'm going to show fast action, tactical list generation and engagement. What we're going to be doing before the event, we do a little bit of homework, we set this up. So when you come, we're going to open the door for you. It's a session that I do. It's a fast action strategy to actually get appointments and also make sales. Some people literally made sales at the event, at the event, at the San Diego event, there were two people who actually made sales. Uh, several people made several appointments uh, from those from those sales. I'm going to walk. You're going to walk out with a 90-day action plan. If you're looking to scale and grow, get clarity and focus, you want to be in this room. Balls, you've been to three of these events. What are they like? The value is bar none the best I've ever encountered. It's, guys, like this is like some serious stuff. You're gonna. Uh, we've invited people to the to the one in San Diego. Everyone walked out there with just their mind blown. Hey, I have so much to do with actual direct steps to take and implement the second they leave the event and stuff that they actually do at the event. So uh, probably one of the best experiences I've had at any type of live event. Thanks, Balls. And you're not being paid to say that either. <laughs> <laughs> I, get I just want to bring value to the groups. Uh, John has definitely provided uh, me with tremendous value. Anybody that we recommend over to him uh, has nothing but great things to say. So. Uh, yeah, this is just good stuff. If you guys can attend Denver, uh, I'll be there. A couple of people from the group will be there. Um, it's definitely going to be worth every penny of admittance. <laughs> the last event in San Diego, this is what happened. We had Brian Marable who picked up a client. He actually picked up a huge, uh, uh, he, he contacted SEO, one of the largest travel companies in the world using this, uh, using the strategy we executed at the event. This was the little Skype chat that he sent me. Uh, that he, you know, he took action straight away and was able to get a client uh, literally <laughs> straight out from the event. Uh, Vlad here, uh, just applying the stuff. Vlad used to do uh, add a lot of value uh, in the last uh, couple of months, uh, just from the last event. Forty-two thousand. In fact, there's more than that. I think it's in the in the close to sixty thousand uh, dollars in revenue by applying the strategies that he learns learnt from the event. He's actually been to two of my events so far. Now, I've got a very special friend coming, Tim Conley, who talks about how to scale and how to build your teams. He's gonna be talking very specifically about how to leverage your team. So rather than, you know, how do you actually speed up the process and how you go to seven figures, he's gonna lay out a plan on how to do that. His whole thing is about building teams and leadership. Uh, he's an incredible consultant, one of my uh, dear friends, who's brilliant. Uh, Balls, I know we had a private day uh, with, with Tim. What was it like with Tim? Um, definitely probably the best day of the event for me, just because, you know, taking, taking a look at my business and saying, Hey, what, what do I need to put in place? Who do I need to start putting in place so I can scale it without me having to necessarily be there? I think one of the biggest concepts was, Hey, if you can take a week off from your business, no phone, nothing, and it still grows without you, that's where you want to have your business running in the next couple of years. Yeah. So at this event, I've got Tim sharing specific strategies and he's, we've actually got some big seven figure earners coming to this event that you can hang out with and network with as well. So here's the deal. Mastermind ticket, normally 1197. The recordings are normally a thousand bucks. Together the event is $2,194.
because you're part of this group, and I only just shared with this, this with Balls because uh, uh, literally before we were hopping on, I said, look, I'll tell you what, for this group, I'm going to let them come for free, right? So it's in Denver if you go to Consulting Unleashed Live. Now, to secure your ticket, we just need a $100 refundable deposit, right? If you use the code biz not BS, right? So B I Z N O T B S, biz not BS, $100, and you'll get to go to the ticket. If you turn up to the event, I'll refund you $100. Okay, so it is free. It is free to go and pick up and learn how to pick up clients and generate clients for your consulting business and probably hang out with some of the most successful consultants that I work with uh, and network with a group of your peers. Um, and let me tell you, the big thing is you're going to get clarity and focus. You're going to get so clear and so focused with action that you can take that you'll be able to scale and accelerate your business very quickly from this event. And here's how you get the ticket. On the page, there's a thing. It says ticket. It says enter your promotional code, right? So uh, if you type in enter code biz not BS in the code, uh, there you'll pay $100 and you'll uh, that's a refundable deposit to go to the event, okay? So if you use biznotbs.co, go to consultingunleashedlive.com, you'll get your ticket. Uh, we are going to be, uh, there's a little bit of uh, uh, lead up into the event where you're going to set yourself up so that you can maximize your opportunity at the event. Uh, one of the things that I do at the event, and Balls was uh, talking about it, is I actually write and work on your campaign in the room at the event. You will have me constructing a campaign for you that you can push the button on and go out and generate clients. Balls saw me do that with 35 people. I literally wrote, uh, I, I think I created 20 campaigns in an hour. Yeah? Yeah. In one hour, I tailored 20 customized campaigns for people in the room and groups in the room so they can get out to the market. So if you want me to customize a campaign for you uh, so that you can press the button and go and generate clients, then uh, free, I think, is a pretty good investment. Yeah, Bolts? I think it's a tremendous, tremendous yeah. investment, guys. It's, it's yeah. an event that you don't want to miss. Literally, if you're in the area, you fly out to the area. I've been to three of these, and every time it's, I always learn something, I get a little bit more clarity, and I move forward. So everybody that came to the event in San Diego a couple of months back um, that we invited, basically... I, I can't even, the, the response, you can go look back at the videos and their testimonials from it. The response has been phenomenal. Everyone loves it. Even somebody's still commenting on it right now. Yeah. So, yeah. So, as I said, I've opened this up to you. Now, these tickets will go fast, right? Um, and so, I, I only limit, because I can only work with so many people in the room. This is not a huge event, right? We try to keep this fairly intimate because we want to give as much attention to you as possible uh, whilst for the event. So it's not massive. So here's the thing. I'm going to buy you breakfast. I'm going to give you morning and afternoon teas and I'm going to buy you lunch at the event as well. Right? So you get to come, you'll have breakfast, lunch and at the event. We'll also do, we'll do networking opportunities. Uh, but this is an event that I put on specifically for people. Uh, my private uh, mastermind people come along, people like Balls come along uh, to the, to the uh, event. I try and I actually put them on for, put this event on for them specifically. And now I've introduced or invited a few other people to come along and check this out because I know a lot of people need either a leg up or a, a, an encouragement to get things going or they want to level up. If you're sitting there making five or 10 grand a month, uh, this is a really fast way where you can double, quadruple or triple that within 90 days uh, by applying those strategies. So if you are interested, go to consultingunleashedlive.com, use the code BIZNOTBS, you'll get your deposit $100. It will be refundable if you turn up to the event. Uh, you'll get your money. So this event is free. This is two days with me, other consultants around the world, with Tim, talking about targeting, engaging, generating sales, and you're also going to have me working on your campaign. So if you want me to work on your campaign to go out to the market, and I've done a lot of this sort of stuff and got amazing results, right, then I would highly encourage you to come along uh, to this event. This event will sell out. It will sell out. So you need to make your decisions quickly. Uh, the other thing also with this event Getting to Denver is one of the easiest cities on, cities on the planet to get to. Uh, we are at the base. We're, we're literally facing the Colorado Rocky Mountains, which I was there three weeks ago, and they are snow-capped, uh, even though the weather was like 90 degrees or it was 92 degrees. I couldn't believe that in Denver. Um, but the weather is amazing. The location is incredible. The reason I hold the event on a Thursday and Friday is people extend their visits for the weekend and go and hang out in Boulder and do all that sort of stuff because it's really cool. 
Um, so it is in a great location. It's at a great hotel. The hotel was also given us a, a cheap rate, a really ridiculously cheap rate to stay there. So there are there is a link on the website to get a rate uh, for the for the hotel. Uh, fly, I just looked on Cheapo Fair. LA to Denver return, one hundred and fourteen dollars uh, is the cheapest flight I just found. Uh, New York to Denver, Colorado, two hundred and forty six return I found. Uh, so there are some pretty ridiculous flights. Sorry. Yeah, I just I, I looked at that the other day. Two hundred forty six dollars round trip. Um, yeah. But Ross it's just Vancouver. Ross is in uh, Canada. You met him at the San Diego. He's like, oh, round trip yep. only three bucks. So it's cheap to fly now, guys. Uh, orbits, yeah. uh, orbits, Expedia, so many different websites. Find a good round trip ticket, even if you have to connect. Yep. Get it for even cheaper if you connect. Yep. Um, yeah. So I've made this offer to you. Ridiculous offer. Um, uh, uh, people are thinking, you know, Balls probably thinks I'm nuts um, to, uh, to do this. Uh, but I want people who are serious about growing their business. I want people in that room who want to collaborate, who want to learn, who want to apply this stuff. And more importantly, if you want to generate business, like I'm talking about getting business from the event. I'm not talking about going home and getting stuff happening. That's going to happen anyway. I'm talking about opening the door to you getting clients straight away from the event. That's what I'm talking about. So the idea is that I want to make sure that there, this is as valuable as possible. Uh, when I had Tim come out last uh, on the last event, he was blown away. He took an idea from me at the live event. He gave it to his private mentoring group, and they went and made tens of thousands of dollars from the event. So if you're serious, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sorry, you go ahead, balls. I'll let you. Uh, so I was going to say the value of the event. It's not only that you're there amongst everyone else that's doing that's doing something similar. It's, hey, if I'm going to sit, you're, you're going to sit down for about an hour, two hours to put together your strategy. You'll have John over your shoulder literally saying, hey, type this. No, take this out. Now send that. And when you're in that room and people are like, holy shit, I generated X amount of people. Somebody responded. Or holy shit, this person wants to have a conversation. It's kind of incredible when you see it happening with other people in the room and say, hey, you know what? Let me just go there. Let me just do it. Let me implement and just, just take action. Thanks, Balls. I appreciate it. So I'll leave this slide up. I'm happy to answer questions. Yeah, we only uh, have like four um, questions, guys. There's a bunch of people watching. Really? Good. Yeah, there's a, like 30 people watching. We only have four questions. Uh, if, if they keep coming in, they keep coming in. Um, but okay. yeah, so the first one is actually something that somebody said, hello, John, thanks for helping us. Uh, I missed the beginning. So you missed the part where you're going to actually, where you actually mentioned this, because I remember this part. Um, I missed the beginning, beginning, so I hope I am not asking some questions you have already covered. What are your top five most lucrative niches? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I just Sorry. Made a comment that said, hey, this question gets asked every single time, and yep. I just go back and cover that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the, for the person who asked the question, uh, look, every niche is a valuable niche. But my thing is, and I think I've been alluding to this in the training, is my question is who needs lots of leads? Who needs the phone to ring off the hook? Who needs to uh, <coughs> get people buying off their websites? Now that, now, that might be a really silly, simple answer because everybody needs that, but not everybody's going to invest in that. So what I've said is I look at companies that are 5 million plus uh, or two, you know, 2 million at the low end, 5 million up uh, higher than that. They're the companies that are willing to invest in the marketing. So if you've got a service that's going to help them get that result, then it's not that difficult to get into the door and uh, and share it with them and generate clients. So to me, the best niches, if I was going to pick niches, health niche, anything in the health-related industries, need lots and lots and lots of leads, lots of patients. They need lots of stuff. Uh, contractors, trade services, financial services, uh, big niche. One niche that nobody's tapping into, by the way, and I'm going to I've talked about this uh, quite a bit. But it's, it is growing. And actually, I'm going to talk about it at the live event on how to get into this niche because it's huge and it's worth billions of dollars because there's companies uh, out there uh, exploiting it. There's a manufacturing niche. Manufacturing and online marketing uh, is a huge door that's about to be open. Now, here's, here's, here's why it's such a big niche. Uh, there's this little company, really small company. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this company uh, called Alibaba. Tiny, tiny business, right? Uh, they represent 300,000 manufacturers in Southeast Asia, and they generate 19. If you, I went and looked at their annual report in this last quarter and last three months, they generated 19 billion dollars with a net profit. 19 billion dollars selling manufacturing services direct to the market. 
So Alibaba represents uh, buyers, represents manufacturers where customers can go direct to a manufacturer and buy products and services, even as little as individual products and services direct to manufacturer in China, right? Now, here's the thing. If you live in the US right now, guess where the biggest push is right now? Manufacturing, right? Everybody's trying to get manufacturing because there's incentives to open up manufacturing. But here's the thing. Anybody that offers a factory direct service needs to be online with their e-commerce. They need Facebook traffic. They need AdWords. They need uh, they need websites. They need uh, you know uh, uh, a lot of help with their online sales. And then let me tell you, they're desperate because most manufacturers now are saying they're bypassing their wholesale channels and they're realizing that a customer will come to them directly. In fact, one of the guys that I work, Mike Renard, was talking to a lady about running some email marketing campaigns for her business, and she said exactly these words to her. He couldn't believe it when I said to him, what I said to him. Her words to him were, sorry. <laughs> I've had a little bit of a cold. Uh, her words to him were, hey, uh, uh, Mike, look, uh, we want to go direct to the customer. We're a manufacturer. We want to sell our product direct to the customer. Can you help us do that? No problem at all, right? They're going to be investing about $50,000 in their e-com service, factory direct. They're going to need traffic. They're going to need sales funnels. They're going to need the whole thing. She's going to do the whole shebang, but she'll start with a $50,000 website for her business, right? Because she knows that the margins are greater if they go direct. Factory Direct, if you understand how that works, and if you've got, and all of you here selling Facebook advertising, perfect for Factory Direct. Massive market. How do I get customers to, to buy direct from me in the market? Here's a, here's a classic. I was talking to a manufacturer, uh, and he says, you know what, it's really weird. We get so many inquiries for people who want to buy the product, we don't know how to sell it to them. Like we, we, sell our stuff, <laughs> we sell our stuff through the wholesalers, and then what happens is people come to us and we send those people, instead of selling to them, we send all those people to wholesalers and they pay full retail to the market when, you know, stupid us should be, I said, this was the question I asked, how many inquiries do you get a month where people are asking you for direct sales? He said, we, we, get about, we get about 80 inquiries a month. We get 80 inquiries and we send every single one of those to a wholesaler. They all use their I said, A lot of companies are like that still. It's still yep. surprising. Yep, but no distributors. Go ahead. No distributors. Most distributors are not loyal anymore. They're only loyal to the brands that support them. So you know, now the the retailers are, are bypassing distributors. I saw a wholesale distributor that, that had to rebrand their stuff because all their market's been decimated because all their customers now go direct to the factory. Well, Amazon's right? doing that too. Amazon. Um, <laughs> so Amazon has the third party seller program, and what they're yep. doing is they're taking all that data and they're taking manufacturers. And they're selling the same product that they have all these sellers selling on their platform. They're selling yep. it through Amazon Basics or creating their own brands. A lot of people actually I just saw an article that they're putting it yep. in a lot of different brands that they actually yep. own. Yep. I I um uh I spoke to a uh, one of I spoke and this is the US. I spoke to a buyer who buys thirty million dollars worth of pipe from a manufacturer through Alibaba. Right? They buy thirty million dollars worth of pipe every single month. They sell that $30 million to wholesalers. When what the, the again with him, he says, mate, we get so many people, so many specifiers who come to us direct and we direct them to the other, other buyer. We give the money away. Yeah. You know, I said, we've got a strategy. This is one of the key markets that are growing. So go and check out the Manufacturers Association in whatever country you're in. Factory direct, big market. Lots of money in factories, tons of cash. They've got equipment. They've got you know, heaps of people that they employ. They have to do millions of dollars with a trade to, to grow. They're the best e-commerce opportunity markets on the planet and very few. So there, John? Cut out. We lost John here for a second. Um, he should hopefully be back. Let me see if I can get him on Skype. He may have just lost his internet, but we do still have some other questions to go through. Um, that's unfortunate. Just bear with us for a few minutes. I'm going to see if I can get him back on the call. He should hopefully be coming back here in a few minutes. All right, guys, what do you guys think? Oh, we got a couple of people um, saying they're going. Hopefully, John can get his connection back up. Um, but yeah, all right. So Eddie's going, Danny Vega, Danny Vega, for those of you who are watching in the Entrepreneur Hustle group, Danny Vega will be there in Denver. Uh, looks like Eddie's coming. Um, 
let's see, Brandy Spencer, uh, if that sounds like something for people who have been in the game for a while, is that true? Not necessarily, and hopefully John come back and we can uh, get some clarity on that. I do have like five other questions to go through from him. Um, Antonio was in San Diego, but did not attend the event, but uh, you should definitely see if you can make it to Denver, uh, Antonio. Um, Sema, Sema, hopefully you'll be there. Um, John looks like he's coming back online, so um, yeah, he's back online in Skype, so he should hopefully be back with us. Here he is. All right, John, or no, he's not back yet. Let's see. Hopefully he'll be back here in a minute, guys. But yeah, guys, so if you're thinking about attending the event, literally it will sell out. There's not gonna be a lot of tickets available. So make sure that you guys take advantage of the ridiculous offer that John has put in front of us to attend this event for free. So make sure you go to consultingunleashedlive.com um, and the promotional code to enter to, is, is to get it for get it for free, and it's actually hundred dollars refundable. So if you show up, you will actually get um, your money back for the uh, refundable deposit. Um, it's gonna be hundred bucks. The, the promotional code is um, biz b i z not b s. So b i z n o t b s. Um, so the date of the events is actually let me check September seventh and eighth. So September 7th and 8th in Denver, live event, live workshop. Um, we're going to be, um, John's going to be going over multiple strategies. You can check out the sales page. He offered us a great deal uh, for the people that are in this group. Um, so yeah, it's consultingunleashedlive.com. The promotional code is biznotbs. Get it. If, you, if you're in the Denver, you can make it out there. You'll definitely get your money's worth within the hey, first few minutes that you're there. Yeah, I hear you, John. All right, so John's back. It looks, all right, we still have some viewers. I was just kind of uh, hoping you'd get back in here. Oh, yeah, John, you can hear us? Uh, he left uh, again. So I think he's trying to have, he's trying to get back in here, guys. Uh, yes, I heard you. So let's see if we can get him back in here. Uh, yeah, he said, give him a second, guys, and he'll jump back on. We still have more questions um, to get through here. So there is about four or five more questions. If you guys have questions, John will, John will be joining back with us here in a minute. Um, so go ahead and ask some questions, and we'll get right back to it here when he, uh, when he gets back online. So, yes, he is fixing his internet. He'll be back on it in a second. Guys, uh, I, I have, like, this, this stream shared out to so many groups. So if you guys have any comments, um, I'm just trying to like go through the different groups and see. But if you're watching on the Business Not Bullshit live page, um, just make your comments there. If you have questions for John, put them in the Google form. So it's going to be biznotbs.com forward slash questions. Um, and there you can ask your questions. John will be back with us here in a minute or two once he gets his uh, technology sorted out. Uh, talking to him real quick on Skype. So what you understand, uh, the, the Denver event, so I've been to the New York event, I've been to um, the San Diego event, and the New York event was back in December, almost, uh, almost uh, December of last year, uh, of 2016, and really like the action, the strategies that I implemented there, uh, after that event, I ended up working directly one-on-one -on -one with John, uh, the San Diego event was much okay. John's back. Okay, okay guys. Awesome. Right. Some, yeah, no worries. So I was uh, kind of just letting people know about hey, how to get in touch with uh, get to the event. Uh, Denver event, Antonio, is free if you are watching the screen. Um, it's free, you just put a hundred bucks deposit refundable when you show up. The event will be September 7th and 8th. I do, um, into some questions, John. There's, we draw lost a few people with your technology mishap. Yep. Uh, there's about 16 people watching right now. Um, so yep. let's jump to the next question. So somebody yep. asked, if I have been in marketing for 15 years, new to the digital agency aspect, just starting one, how do we handle yep. asking for our past performance if we are new? So basically like case studies, right? I don't have any, <laughs> I don't have any results. So what do you recommend in that, in that aspect? 
Okay, so this is a question that's really, really weird. This is something that happens all the time with people who are just starting out. Um, I don't know about you, Balls, but uh, do people really ask you for all your past results? Not necessarily. Um, I think it's just kind of like a mental barrier. Hey, I don't, I, I'm, I, I don't have the confidence to say, hey, I yeah, can do this yeah. result. But I mean, yeah, some people yeah. do ask for references, so I give it to them, but it, yeah. it doesn't happen as frequently. Yeah, very rarely does it ever happen uh, in most cases. So here's how I would uh, approach that. Um, if somebody says, you know, have you ever done this before? I would say, if I'm using an outsourced team, I would say, yeah, my team have been doing this for years, you know? Um, because if you're if you're new to this game, one of the easiest ways for you to grow is to use an outsourced provider or a resource provider to deliver your strategy. So if I was gonna sell Facebook ads, I would go and have a Facebook resource partner who already runs Facebook ads, who manage my clients accounts and I'd sit there and talk and say listen uh, I'm going to go and target businesses um, one of the best businesses that you can get results for I'll say well we get great results for chiropractors or we get great results for manufacturing firms great um, how do you get results let me how do we work together how can I how how do we work together and what are you you know what will you do to help me to get my clients results so that way your resource partner will give you the the you know, any areas or questions around um, uh, skill, any questions around capabilities, past references, all those sorts of things, you can actually use their references to actually generate, uh, um, uh, to, to, to share that with the client. The other way I do it, I reverse engineer something and show them the reverse engineer. I've taken the time to understand this process. I've been, in, you know, you've been around in marketing for 14 years. So you, you should be easily able to, to sell their services. I've got people who work for you know, corporate companies who've worked on multiple multiple projects for the companies they've worked for, and so they've built their skills in the corporate world. And so, what they're now doing is taking those skills and bringing them into the real world for their own business. So, it is a mindset thing, as Balls said. In most cases, it really doesn't come up a lot. Um, but if it does, if a client says, "Hey, am I, am I the first one?" I'm honest with them, say, "Yeah, you are the first one." However, here's my plan to get you the result. You know, now if I'm using a resource partner, then I can say, hey, well, our team, because you're a resource partner, our team has been working on this for years. Uh, we've got dozens and dozens of people in the market. We've generated thousands of leads, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars worth of sales. What do you want to do? So it's not hard. When I had our web development agency, I did not design, I didn't know how to design websites. I'm not a web developer, right? I'm not a, I'm not a design person. So the person that I used to do all our design was my agency. You know, uh, they had a team of 15 designers. Uh, they showed me some of their sampling. I didn't even have a website when I sold websites. How crazy is that? I didn't have my own website. I was selling other people's websites because I didn't need a website. Their website was more important. I just needed to understand how they got a result. What was the best strategy? What was the best way for them to get what they're looking for in relation to the service I was delivering? My team, the people that I outsourced to, were the people with the skills, with the expertise. So that's my black box. So I might say, can you give me a couple of examples to show um, uh, prospects when I talk to them about the type of design that we do to get results. Can you give me a couple of snapshots and blot out the clients on some of the Facebook results that you get for your clients so that I can show you the clients? Say, well, these are, such, these are a few of the accounts that we work on to get those results. So you don't have to have the, um, the, the experience. You want to get to your first client as quickly as possible. Uh, and I would highly recommend that you uh, outsource the work be the middle person, marketing person, because that's going to leverage and make it a lot easier for you to convert sales as well. So hopefully that answers that question. Definitely. Um, all right, let's move yeah. on to the next one. What wording do you recommend? Example, lead generation, client acquisition. I, guess, I think he's talking about like for their um, emails or like what, what is my strategy? What wording do you recommend um, as far as, hey, I provide X service, right? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know if you take it another way. Yeah. Um, I, if I say to people, it depends on what I'm doing and who, who, who we're doing it for. So for example, in the physical therapy market, we essentially have an automated process and a system that drives uh, patient inquiries every single month. You know, we're responsible for a million and a half dollar, pay, well, more than that, nearly $700,000 of patient sales a month. Uh, we generate more than 15,000 patient leads a month right across America. So generally when we talk about what we do, sorry? Patient leads, patient yeah, patient leads. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't say, I don't say. Depend, I try to use the the language of the person that I'm speaking to, rather than make up a word. Like you know, we, you know, we do, you know, well, we just get you sales or we get you leads. Most people don't know what a lead is. You know, call yourself um, a customer acquisition specialist, and that, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, customer acquisition specialist. You know, we, you know, a niche strategist specialist. 
you know, niche market strategy specialist, implementation specialist, you can call it whatever you want. It's just another word for salesperson. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so to basically look at your niche, figure out some verbiage or some yeah. jargon that's good for that niche. Like if you're working with yeah. dentists, I help drive patients to yeah. practices yeah. that works with chiropractors, that works with uh, yeah. physical therapists, works with yeah. everybody in the medical yeah. space. Just look at here's your- a, here's a, Yeah. This is another way of saying exactly the same thing, but it's, it's and this has, this actually happened to me, right? Um, I went to a, um, uh, I was at a conference, I was at a hotel and I was checking out of the hotel and the guy was standing next to the guy and I just made a comment to the guy next to me because he's in a suit and, you know, it looks like he was going somewhere. I said, I hope you don't have to fly, as f uh, fly, you know, I hope you don't have too far to get home, right? And he says, oh, and we're, we're both like, we're both a long way from it. So I'm going to go to Boston. All right. So what are you doing in LA? So oh, we're setting up operations or an underwriting firm. We're setting up operations to generate clients out here in LA. We're seeing opportunities and we're expanding. Oh, cool. So, you know, who are your clients? And say, so, well, we have a lot of contractors and developers and, you know, those sorts of things. So what, you've got people on the ground here? So yeah, we're going to start putting a team here. And so what, you, you, are you marketing here? You, you're spending, you know, you're starting to open up markets. So yeah, you know, we have to start doing some branding and communication. We've got to uh, get into these markets and start advertising to let people know that we're, we're here, you know? And I said, so what are you looking for? And I said, well, we're looking for contractors uh, that specifically work on projects that are $10 million and up, right? And so I said, wow, that's uh, pretty exciting stuff. He said, yeah, yeah. So you're obviously you're doing a lot of travel. So yeah, I'm doing a lot of travel. Um, he said, so then he asked the question, what do I do, <clears throat> right? So this was my response to him in the elevator. I said, that's funny you should ask. Uh, I tend to work with Boston underwriting companies that are actually looking to expand their markets into contractors uh, that are looking for five and 10 million dollar projects in Los Angeles. That's what I do. Now he laughed at that, but that's exactly what I do, right? I just fed back to him and he, he laughed. It was a lot, he laughed about that. And then I, um, you know, he gave me his business card and then uh, it started the relationship. The one thing, there's two things out of that point. I'll do what you want. <laughs> right? What is your ultimate thing that you want in your business? And I, if I specialize in that, that's what I'm going to do, right? Um, uh, because that's what I'm building my business around, right? Uh, yes, I focus on niches rather than going out generically to the market. I strongly recommend the fastest way to grow is through a niche. If you want to grow really quickly and you want to get smart about it, you want to work with, um, you want to partner up with supply chains within niches because they've already got the customers, they've already got the contacts, they're already doing the sales. So partner up with a strategic alliance within a, with a, within a chain and that can open up tens of thousands of dollars every month in sales. You know, yep. I did, there's heaps of, there's a few uh, consultants in my consulting champions group that actually do this really well, you know, where they're generating partnerships with associations, with supply chain in the health niche that, that uh, the agency that uh, I'm, I closely work with and align with, we are developing partnerships where the partner is paying us introduce leads to us they're paying us for access because we're adding value to their markets right like we got one we got one uh, partner uh, through a supply chain that's paying us a hundred thousand dollars so that we can actually present to their clients how money. weird is that awesome yeah we're getting money up front yeah so we're helping their clients get more sales so they can buy more of their stuff exactly. right so they see the symbi symbiotic relationship right to them it's worth it yeah so, uh, you know, people often ask me the question, what will you do? To me, strategic alliance partnership, number one, super fast. Get to an event really quickly. Talk to as many people as possible, face to face if I can. Um, cold email, cold outreach to people, very, very fast, very quick. Uh, <laughs> I do advertise. I would recommend advertising for leads, but if you're using Facebook for leads, you tend to attract low ball clients in most cases, unless you're using, unless you, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, I don't mean to do that in all your ears. Unless you're targeting really big clients, then my strategy for marketing on Facebook would be more driven around educating, uh, providing you know really super high valuable content uh, that that they can engage with. So it drives them to a landing page, it drives them to an inquiry. That's how you get you get bigger deals because you've got to you've got to think about this person's not going to pick up the phone and say, hey, I just saw your ad on Facebook. I want to do you know I'm going to you know fill your form in. What they want to do is they want to check out what you know. So if you're speaking to a market and you've got a really good strategy or you've got a great case study, uh, put that on the Facebook ad. That'll get you the bigger clients as well. So those are th those are a couple of things that I would do. I would go direct to the market, strategic alliance with somebody, do some running, run some campaigns uh, with high value content, um, and uh, and pick up the phone.
um, you know, talk to people as quickly as possible. Uh, I, you know, it's not hard to generate a significant amount of revenue doing that um, in your business. So if you were still, as I said, there's still, thanks for some people actually jumping and grabbing a ticket, which is awesome. Uh, there are still tickets available. You get to go for free. You just need to put down a $100 refundable deposit. When you come into the live event, you'll get that money back. Um, however, the seats will be limited, right? Uh, this is a ridiculous offer. I'm basically inviting you into my private event for free. That's worth $1,200. If you're, if you're in an agency and you want to grow an agency and you want to get strategies that will gen generate business for you straight away, um, and you see that as an, you know, if, if the if your investment is an airfare and two and, a, and two nights accommodation, um, you know that's the bargain of the century. I've got a few people that are thinking that I'm crazy right now, but uh, but balls is balls is with the fun. I got some private messages. They're like, what, free? <laughs> I got a few of those messages and some people commented yeah. on the page. It's, it's yeah. a great value, guys. Uh, I'm gonna jump into some other questions. Um, yep. We have, we have a few more. Um, so, yep. can, uh, and this is probably a little bit more specific. So can you get Facebook to deliver consistently? How do you manage yes. expectations on lead volume with a client? So I guess that's where the, like, hey, I don't, I wanna, I don't know what I should tell my client. I don't know how, if I'm going to be able to perform on the back end okay. to get this result. All right. All right. So you want to test, you, like in any marketer, and this is the thing, um, uh, I would never promise a client unless I knew I could get the result, right? Like you say, I would never promise a client a result if I couldn't get a result. Um, in fact, I don't make results promises, right? Um, but I have used them and I have used guarantees uh, in what I do. First of all, for me to do Facebook advertising for any business, they've got to give me 90 days. They've got to be three months for me to do the tests, to improve the campaign, to make sure the campaign sticks, to make sure Facebook is running so that I can reduce the cost of acquisition of the customers and get the results. Generally, I could get uh, any, in any market, and Balls, you know this, in any market, if you had a thousand bucks, you could get 30 to 50 leads minimum easily, easily in any market. You can get 30 to 50 leads. So one of the things that we do in the health niche is we sit there and say, hey, we'll guarantee you 30 patient inquiries every month as long as you spend a minimum of $1,500 a month in advertising. We'll guarantee you 30 patient inquiries. If you don't get the 30 patient inquiries, you don't pay. We'll pay for it for you. Now we know, and here's the thing, with Facebook ads, we're getting 50 to 100 leads every month. We're getting more than that. In fact, we're averaging out about 60 to 80 leads right across the board for, for less than $1,000 ad spend. So we know that we can get that result, right? But the only way Facebook works is to test. You've got to get your dial your messaging in. You've got to do, look at your strategy. You've got to test it. It's not going to, you know, no campaign crashes or crushes it straight out of the gate in full ball. It has to be matured and tested. So for me, the minimum that you want commitment from a client is 90 days. Now, I'm not, even if I knew how to do Facebook, I would not be doing the advertising. I would actually get somebody else to manage the account who actually does Facebook all day long because they're gonna know what tweaks and what adjustments and what strategies need to be put into place. They've got campaigns that are already working that they can actually maximize the opportunity to generate a result for your client. But I would never say to a client, this is what's gonna happen because you invest this, right? Because I can't, because here's what, why I can't say that. I don't know what they're gonna do with the lead. I don't know how they're gonna close the lead. The only lead that I get people is a lead where the customers put up the hand and said, I'm interested. That's a hot lead for every business, right? But I can't control how the client converts the lead, right? So, so what I try to do is I try to make sure that the company that I'm working with has an optimum selling strategy to close leads. Because when the customer set, company says to me, if I get you 10 leads, how many deals would you close? And they say two, and they say to me, John, we want to, do, we want to get 10 more sales a month. They're not going to give them 100 leads. They're going to give you two to three grand for me to get them 100 leads. That's how I answer that question. The questions that you're asking me here are, are questions around fear, confidence, right? Confidence comes from not being clear about what you're doing in the first place. I know Facebook ads work. I know AdWords works. I know email marketing works. I know automation works. I can give you countless testimonials and case studies from so many different companies and markets. There's a small website called HubSpot, Marketing Sherpa, uh, Marketing Profs. They've got case studies of companies where they literally outline the exact strategy. They show you the snapshots or the screenshots and they show you the campaigns work, right? Facebook ads work, Google ads work. Otherwise, if they didn't work, we wouldn't be spending billions of dollars on advertising every year, 
you know, I know Google Ad, I know Google AdWords works. You know how why I really know it works. Bookings.com, so Bookings.com spends two point five billion dollars on AdWords every year. Last year they spent two point five billion dollars on AdWords. That's billion with a B, right? Yeah. Do you know how many? That's over. That's nearly two hundred million dollars a month on ads on AdWords. Because they're selling accommodation. Now, they, you know what their return is on the advertising? Eight to one. So if I give them a dollar, <laughs> back five, right? So it's the same yeah. guy. What are you eight to them? one. They yeah. make eight to one, right, on their, on their investment on, on uh, AdWords, yeah? So does it work? Absolutely. If you put the right strategy into place, if you partner up with somebody that can help you get that strategy into place, you have a license to print money. We know Facebook works for physical therapists because we just run Facebook ads for physical therapists all day long in every different market. We've got a system and a strategy and it works and we cookie cutter it, right? So the, comp the question you're asking is a question of confidence, right? If you go in there thinking that your campaign is not gonna work, it's not gonna work. Because you're gonna let the client know before they've even made a decision. Don't go into a meeting guessing if it's gonna work or not. Know that you can help people, know that Facebook works. I can, you know, here's the thing. If I don't know that Facebook works in a particular market, all I'm going to do is Google that hidden elusive website that nobody able, seems to be able to find is Google Facebook ad agencies in whatever city. And then I'll find some Facebook people. Then I'll go and check out their website. Then I'll go and check out some of their case studies and go and check out who's, who they're selling to. So if they're selling to the market and they're getting results, then Facebook works in that market. I have validated it, right? Then I'll find out how much they charge, you know? Digital agencies, you know, uh, it, it, because we're, uh, I, I make a joke about it, Balls knows that I say, say this. <clears throat> I say, stop hanging around internet marketers. Don't hang out with internet marketers because I've poisoned your pricing uh, value. Because everybody in the internet marketing game charges a thousand bucks or 2000 bucks for management, you know, right? Because that's what they charge. And so everybody thinks, well, that's what I can get. No, I've got people to charge eight grand a month for AdWords management. Right, I had somebody who's charging six thousand dollars for Facebook management with a minimum three thousand dollar ad spend. Six thousand dollars a month management and a minimum three thousand dollar ad spend. The management is twice as much as the ad spend. Yeah. Great stop stuff. hanging around and listen. Stop listening to internet marketers. Yeah, Talk to business right, yeah. people. Some you know? just, that's our so, biggest takeaway from San Diego, right? Because we all under all internet marketers undervalue themselves, right? So, yeah. Yeah. I love internet marketers because I hire them because they're cheap. They're cheap, cheap, cheap because they're, they, and they do good work and they've got great work. I don't, and I say to them, tell me what you want me to pay and I'll pay it. And then they'll say, I'll, I'll structure. <laughs> I had an automation guy who did some automation set up for me, uh, charged me 800 bucks. I would have paid him five grand for it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not going to tell him that, you know, I asked him, how much do you want? He says, I want 800 bucks. Okay, great. I'll pay you 800 bucks. That's awesome. Thank you. Maybe watch you know? one. Maybe watch one. Then he'll be like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I've just, I've, just screwed, I've just screwed myself. Anybody that's going to, I'm going to hire and say, oh, I'm going to charge John 10 grand. Yeah. But it's a value proposition. I just paid three and a half thousand dollars for design, for some graphic design. I thought I was getting a really good deal because a designer that I've got normally charges 20 grand for their designs. You know, I got it for three and a half because they, they, thought that I was looking for a cheap deal and I wasn't, right? But they'll, they're going to do all this stuff for three and a half grand. So you're fine, I'll give it to you. Tell me I'm what you want, you know? Let's jump into the next question. Um, yeah. Next question. If we come to the event, what prep work should we have with us if you're going to help us with our marketing funnel? So I guess. I okay. So if you, come, if you come to the event, there's going to be some instructions and emails that are going to be coming to you prior to the event. It's really simple, basic stuff. I give you two things that you need to do. You will see what those things are. And if you do them, they're really easy. There are people who didn't do the homework, came to the event and still got results because I made them do it on the spot. It's really easy. But that's, that's the only prep, right? The, preps, the prep is super, super simple, right? But, uh, but you will get, if you, do, if you sign up for the event, you'll get an email that'll say, this is what I need you to do before you come to the event. And it's really simple. So, that, so yes, uh, the, prep is, the prep doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, it's actually, uh, and it's really going to help you. But I've had people who, you know, for whatever reason, didn't do the prep, turned up the event, and we still made them sales at the event. <laughs> you know, there's no excuse. I, there is no way that I'm going to let you out of that place without putting yourself out there into the market to generate an opportunity for yourself. 
You can't sit back. You cannot hide from me because the room is too small and I will find you, right? I'll guarantee <laughs> you that I'll, I'll guarantee you that I will help you get out of the market. I don't care. It, it, you know, there were so many people in the room at San Diego. There's not a single person in the room that walked out of there without taking action on what I shared. Um, yes. that, and, and we do that on the very first day. The prep work is just so that when you get there, you're not wasting time doing the prep work so you can actually take action and see some results. So that, that's going to yeah. be super clear in the emails. I've been to two of the events already. So don't worry about that. It's not, it's not difficult. Just come, ready to, just come ready to work. Bring your laptop and come ready to work. Um, Absolutely. Um, let's see. So have you, experienced, have you experienced in promoting legal services? Does Facebook like legal yes. services? I have heard they don't. Many thanks. It depends on the legal service. It depends on exactly what you're offering uh, to get the ads through. Uh, 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 yes, I have a huge experience with uh, the legal fraternity in Facebook. Well, most people do is they make a mistake and making, they're making promises, this whole no win, no guarantee, all this sort of stuff. Uh, but if you craft your ads based around the service, uh, you'll find your ads will actually be accepted by Facebook and you will be able to attract clients for, for legal firms. There are people, there are Facebook uh, white label agencies that specialize in legal uh, uh, ads for, for Facebook. I'm not going to tell you who they are. Use Google to find them. Yeah, guys. There's, um, there's, a, there's a few of them around that specialize, it, specialize in it. There is a couple of sites that you can go to, like Ad Espresso has ads um, yep. that you can view. Um, Addicted.io is no longer available. There's another one that I can't, yeah. can't remember the name that has really good uh, ads that you can go look at from Facebook. Just type in the keyword. Uh, if I remember the name in a little bit, I'll post it in the comments or just PM me and I'll look it up for you. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah, so just let's jump to the next question. I think you answered that. Um, do you have any, do you have a say in your creative used in your ads? So I, I think he means like, if I come to the manager's mind, I, like, are we going to have a say in what's said? Like, uh, that's what I take from now. I don't know if you take something different. Do I have a say in what people see in my ad? What creative used in your ads? So I'm thinking that it's if somebody yeah. goes to the workshop, will they have a say in, in what input in what, I think they're thinking that they're going to set up ads in the workshop or I don't know. No, we're not going to set up ads. We're going to run, we're going to go and get clients directly. We're not going to run a Facebook ad campaign. We are actually going to run a direct action strategy to generate clients. We're going to create an offer and go out to a market. We're going to create an opportunity and go out to a market. So we're not going to be designing Facebook ads. We're not going to teach. If you, you, know, you can learn how to do Facebook for Jason Hornong, from Keith Krantz, from uh, 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 our friend Daniel Viega. You know, you can go and learn how to do Facebook ads from those guys. What I'm going to teach you is how to go get a customer, how to get a client. Uh, that's what I'm going to teach you and how to do it fast. So if you want a client uh, paying you money and you want to do it quickly, then that's what this is all about. So that's, I would let me tell you, those tickets will sell out. I have not opened these tickets to two of my partners uh, that, that, that I will open these up in the next uh, in the next few days. When I do, it'll be gone. It'll be gone. This is the only opportunity you're going to get to see me for free for two days and then you get me working directly on your campaign at the event. So I would not hesitate to grab that seat if I were you. Just so you know, John, uh, Ross, Ross, who was at the event in San Diego, he just PM me. He said, tell John we went from about three to 4K revenue to being on pace for 15K this month. And he just attended the event, the workshop wow. back at the end of May, I believe it was, end of May. So yeah. from from three to 4K in revenue to 15K this month, that's only two months, 60 days, yeah. right? So yeah. the value that's shared at the, at the workshop, uh, it's it's more of taking action. So don't get hung up on any of the, the deliverables or anything like yeah. that. It's, hey, let's get some money in the door and worry about the deliverable, deliverables after we get paid, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. Okay, um, somebody's asked, and so so many people are asking, I, I got a message about it too. Um, they can't make Denver's event and they'd like to buy a master mastermind. How can I get started? So if guys, if you want to get in touch with John and see if he's the right person to work with for your business, uh, just shoot me a message and I'll get you all set up on that. I don't really want to spend too much time on that. Uh, we want to focus kind of more on the workshop, right, John? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, shoot a message to Balls and uh, he'll get you in touch with me if we, yeah. if you want to talk, talk further. Absolutely. Yeah. No problem good, at all. Yeah, get you all squared away. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. Oh, here's a different one. What's the what's your worst niches to avoid? <laughs> so the opposite of the one that everyone asks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So worst niches to avoid are niches that have no money to spend on marketing and advertising. 
So, or sorry, it shouldn't be niche. It should be the type of business to avoid. The type of business that I avoid are small businesses. They're the people I avoid. So what I mean by a small business, any business under $2 million, don't bother because they don't have the budget. They don't have the money. Um, they're going to, they're going to break your heart because they're always going to expect the world for as, as little as possible. And it's not possible to do that. They've got to allocate a budget. They've got to be willing to invest in marketing. So any business under 2 million, I don't bother. But the business is under $2 million, I leave to all the internet marketers who don't want to make any money. Yeah. So it's got to be, they've got to be 2 million and up. We Sorry? Talk about this a lot the, we talk about this a lot in the group. Um, yeah. Guys, yeah. even if you're scared to go after the two to 5 million range, right? A lot of people have that fear like, hey, is this business owner going to talk to me? Um, one of the easiest ways is to just focus on people that are spending money, right? So if you go to certain, what you can, See who's spending money on AdWords. See who's spending money on any other local marketing. You got the, I have like prime time, like home, home, home shoppers guide, all that stuff. They all put spending money on advertising. Find people that are spending money. You're, the last thing you want to do is convince somebody on why they should market. The best thing to do is to say, hey, you're spending three grand here. Give me 1500 of that or give me two, two grand of that and let's do this, right? We want to shift their budgets, not make their budgets. Yeah, if you if you're spending thirty five thousand dollars on TV advertising, give me five grand of that, and I'll bet you I'll beat the TV ads. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you, you know, so late night TV ads like on oh, CNN, yeah. Fox, yeah, at, yeah. at yeah. twelve to four in the morning. There's these people that are marketing their local business because that's the cheapest time slots. But those cheap time slots are still a lot of fucking money. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. they're not cheap. Radio, radio ads on average, most radio stations won't do ads for uh, unless you unless you pony up 12 grand, four grand a month for three months. That's for the cheap radio ads. So the more expensive radio ads, you're paying anywhere between 12 to $18,000 a month. Now, if you're spending 12 to $18,000 a month and not putting any metrics to that, that's money, that's money down the drain. Anybody that's advertising on TV, I would go after. Anybody after radio, I would go after because they're going business to consumer. They're targeting the consumer market and Facebook ads are perfect for them. Me uh, messenger ads are perfect for business these days. It's cheaper. You know, right now I'd be doing, I, I, if I was doing, if I was doing B2C, I'd be doing messenger ads because I'm paying cents. I'm, I'm paying cents on the lead. You know, like I had a contractor uh, who, who did some message. <laughs> we were testing some messenger ads. They spent, was $200 on messenger ads and they made $300,000 in contracts on a $200 ad spend. It was ridiculous, but that's because it was highly targeted. Yeah. One now that's not always going to be the case, by the way. Yeah, it's not always going to be the case. Yeah, but one of the biggest things about digital marketing, like what we do, Facebook, if you're doing AdWords, whatever it is, you can quantify an ROI. You can track the return. Yeah. The These guys yeah. spending on radio, TV, direct mail, most of the time they're not tracking that unless they're using a tracking number, but most of the time they don't. They're just spending the money because that's what's been told to them. Hey, the sales rep walked into their office, said, hey, we can put you in this thing that hits 50,000 homes, but that those homes aren't targeted. Those homes may not need your service. So what yeah. we can do is we can say, hey, this is the person's information. Did they turn into a customer? At the end of the month, you can say, hey, you spent X amount. How much did you make, right? Not, not any other form of advertising can really do that. Yeah. Oh, you, <coughs> excuse me. Oh. You want real radio customers? Go, go sign up to a local radio station where they do a media by day and go to the media by day and every single person there is your ideal prospect and just, just collect cards and you can get, because all those guys want to sign up on 20 grand with advertising or 50 grand with advertising. Every single one of those will spend money with you. Just drive and look at billboards. I see a billboard yeah, for yeah. all the time. I have yeah. med spots that promote in those big one page color, full page inserts that I know cost three or four grand every time it hits a home. Like yep. just, the easiest way to know how they're spending money, you know, when you're looking at those local magazines or those local papers, you could look online. A lot of these companies, believe it or not, are franchised. So you can like, they'll all have their own websites for their own customers. So you can see all of the different people advertising, but you just call up yep. that franchisee or that owner of that, that specific route of mailers and ask them, hey, how, I have a client, how much does it cost for running a full page this or a quarter page this and just get pricing. Believe it or not, yeah, in Mexico, yeah. Mexico, in different cities in Mexico, it costs a thousand dollars to run in one of those advertising papers every time it runs. A thousand U.S. dollars—that's a lot of money down. So, yeah. so the, yeah. the opportunities are there. Um, There's no shortage.
Yeah, okay, so more questions. Okay. Yeah, we do have one more that came in. Um, do you ever charge per lead instead of a monthly fee? What's your best way of charging, including how do you ask for ad spend? Okay, so what I would do is I would ask for $5,000 or $10,000 up front to set the system up and I would seed the ad campaign with the upfront. And then at the end of six months, I'd say, uh, 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 I'm happy to give their money back at the end of six months if they don't get the leads. But then I charge per, uh, if I was charging per premium lead, I would be charging, depending on what the lead's worth, I could charge, if, you know, I, well, I've got a friend at the moment, one of the consultants that I've actually guided, uh, he's, get, he's getting, he's in the health niche. He, it costs him eight bucks and he's charging 75 bucks a lead. Guys, the biggest costs way. Him $8 to do way, 75. The biggest way to know what to charge per lead is there's company, I've been, I've done a lot of, I've ran call centers, I've done a lot of these types of leads. I've bought a lot of leads for different businesses. The easiest way is yep. to find yep. out how much people are charging for live transfers, right? Live yep. transfers. Call up other lead providing companies because there's there's tons of them out there in insurance, tax resolution, every industry. Yep. Thing. Yep. Companies out there that are selling leads, so just call them up and ask them how much it is to buy, you know, live transfers. Uh, if I want to buy in blocks of 50 or 100, figure out that yep. cost. And if you can run a campaign that brings it in less than that, then offer it at the same price. I mean, that's yep. the easy. How we do that. That's a, that's another way to do it. But I, you know, but doing cost per uh, cost per lead campaigns. Uh, I would, I would do it's consistency, but I would also target a high value lead. Like if I was going to do cost per lead, I would like to sell a lead for five hundred bucks. But I, but I know that if I can get a sell a lead for five hundred dollars, that it's a highly qualified lead. Yeah, like if I was doing franchise leads, I'd be selling franchise leads at a thousand to two thousand dollars per franchise lead. If I've got all the filtered information yeah, that I need. I, I mean, yeah. franchise, the highest cost, per, the highest lead that I've seen franchise for me that. I've been in that world a lot. I mean, people are paying probably four or five hundred bucks a lead at the yeah. highest. Level. But I don't know. There's other franchises that are worth a lot more money, right? So that, that the franchise fee is at least hundred k. Then you're going to get up yeah. there because that that lead is so specific. But, yeah, um, I'm talking about a highly filtered franchise lead for for a thousand dollars. The cost to acquire that lead is less than hundred bucks. Yeah. So that's yes, you can sell per leads. Uh, there's a lot of really really successful lot, businesses right? that do well. Like, so Sorry? a lot of people get confused on the pay per lead side. Um, people yes. you charge them exactly every time a lead hits, you want to get them on a retainer anyway, right? Yeah. So once, yeah, figure, that's right. once you figure out that cost per lead or what you're going to sell that lead for, if you're going to sell it, say, for a hundred bucks, you're going to have them buy a thousand dollars worth of leads up front. So yeah. you're still yeah. getting some type of retainer and set up some type of monthly budget for that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Strategy. Yep. Um, Here's another one. Uh, John, do you have a strategy for real estate? So if somebody wants to direct uh, you for marketing. Uh, you need to be more specific, man. A strategy for real estate. Do they have a strategy to get listing people or a strategy to get vendors or a strategy to get more rental properties? Uh, you know, yes, uh, it, it, there's easy strategies for listing. Facebook is one of the easiest things for Real, real estate agents to generate listings in their community. The biggest thing with real estate agents is auth building authority within their market. If they can build authority within the local community, especially if they're doing it online, it's a really easy way to get listings. Getting listings is easy. Yeah, that's, that's, there's not, there's no, there's no, good. but here's the thing. I don't like working with real estate agents because they're cheap ass bastards. <laughs> I think when I, I I know when I first started working with you, I was targeting real estate, right? Um, and that was the biggest, and I know a lot of people that are watching still target real estate. It's yep. what yep. I found personally was going after brokers was better because they actually had a marketing budget. And I, exactly. I was in the tax business before and I've, I've done tax returns for real estate agents, the average real estate commission. The average real estate makes a real estate agent makes less than 20 grand. So don't focus on the uh, initial, the actual individual agent, focus on the actual yep. broker or the, the company that has multiple agents working under them because they'll have the marketing budgets. Uh, and That's this person correct. actually updated that they want to know uh, specifically about more listings. Yeah, so listen, more listings. Uh, yes, run. For, you can run Facebook ads uh, that help people list. Uh, it's not hard. I mean, there's heaps of campaigns for, for listings on Facebook. But yes, you can get listings for on Facebook. We do it for develop, property developers to sell apartments and all sorts of things for listings all the time. I'm running, I'm running multiple campaigns, national campaigns right now for developers to sell million dollar homes, right? So yeah. it, it's, you just have to find the strategy and there's so many different ways you can look at yeah. uh, at espresso there's another tool I'll, I'll bring up when i when i find the way i'll post the link 
there's what, different places to, you can look at a, how to generate or what kind of copy to use, but a lot of it's going to come down to uh, testing different strategies. I, I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of turnkey solutions out there right now. And the problem with going with that route is not understanding how to generate it is that Facebook changes every fucking day, right? So something that's working right now is not going to work in three months. If it does, great. I have campaigns I haven't touched that still work, but you need to understand, hey, what's the psychology, what's the fundamentals behind it, or find somebody who does. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I Any other questions? That's it for all the questions um, that came in. Nothing else is here. Guys, for whoever's still watching, um, if you can make this event in Denver, uh, definitely do so. I know this is, uh, is this the last event you're doing for the year? It's, it's like you're not planning anything else, right, for the year? Uh, on, on this particular type of event, no. I'm doing something in New York, but I'm not inviting everybody to it. <laughs> this is it. You're not, you're not going to get it. You are not going to get it for this price ever, anywhere. I'm only doing this because you guys, you know, I mean, I, like Nick, you, um, uh, O's who've been really, uh, you know, who, who I work with basically closely. I mean, you guys have been with me for a little while now. Uh, yeah. I'm not doing, I am not doing this for anybody else. No. So awesome. you guys are, you know, getting the cream of the crop. This is the last chance that you're going to get to come into one of these live workshops. So guys, take advantage well, of free, for free. Uh, I'm, free. Not, I'm never going to, not that I'm not going to do it again, but for free, you're not going to get another opportunity like this again. Guys, <laughs> go check out. You're, you're going to have. Like the seats are going to sell out, right? That there's not, these are not big, big events where there's hundreds of people. It's very small. It's very intimate. You get hands on, um, John will work with you hands on. So if you're still on the fence or you say, Hey, let me, I, I want to know more about it. Just go back, search in the business, not bullshit group, search, like search in the group for San Diego. And you'll see all the people that said all great things about the event in San Diego. So uh, the testimonials are, are just through the roof. So if you can make the event, this is a no brain offer. Like, for fucking free. <laughs> I can yeah. do, oh, we another question. Um, so did, okay, so somebody said it's currently costing us sixty dollars per listing. Is this normal? So they're getting listing leads for their uh, real estate. Okay, it depends on what's the location, what's the campaign, what's the. There are so many variables, uh, you know, that are in, in indicated in that cost. It's hard for me to even answer that question. You know, I mean, I'd need to speak to that person more specifically, but 60 bucks is not a lot. It's not a lot. That's, for, a that's, listing, that's, that's, for a listing, no. No, it's not a lot. Real estate agents love real listings estate. because they don't have to work. So, and then yeah. it's even better if they already have a buyer's database that they can have both sides of the commission on. So yeah. $60 yeah. for them to make 6% on a $300,000 sale, <laughs> or 150000 whatever the market is, right? Yeah. It's a no brainer. I've got, I've had agents that'll pay three to four hundred dollars per lead for a listing. <laughs> I've had, you know, and like if you, you can you can partner with these guys and do a really good deal and even make commission on the sale as well. Yeah, you got to be careful with the laws in the states, right? So the states have yep. the commission yep. laws. Yeah. So, uh, yep. Find a way around it. There's always ways around it. Partner with yep. somebody. Yeah. Find a friend of yours that's a licensed real estate agent. Whatever you yep. do. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so I think that's it for the questions. John, it's Mate. been a pleasant two hours. You always spend a lot of time with us when we uh, have an in-person meet or online. This is the first online one you came to do with us, right? Uh, no, I think I did one before. Didn't I do one, oh, one you on a, earlier you on the show? Before the San Diego event, right? Before the San Diego event. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did hang out. We did hang out. We yeah. should do another one of those uh, sometime soon. Maybe we we'll try to sneak one in before the Hi. live. Reach out, reach out to me. Absolutely. Reach out to me before live and I'll do one. Uh, we can do one in a few days if you want. Guys, if you're when's, your next, when's your next hangout? When's your next hangout? We usually do a uh, fuck it Friday. So um, we haven't done it in the past few weeks because last week we had a separate thing going on. But um, yeah. But yeah, guys, if you're interested in having an open hangout where you guys can come and face-to-face -face ask these questions, just shoot a message in the comments on the video. And if there's enough interest, you know, maybe I'll set up a type of like a 20 or 30 room, like ask me anything, jump on a Zoom or some, some type of yeah. event that will stream live, but the people that are, that opt in can get into the actual room. That'd be pretty yeah. cool. Those questions asked in real time. John's very, very, he doesn't hold back, right? One thing that you probably noticed in this whole two hours we've been on, 
is that um, he doesn't hold back. When you ask him a question, he's not going to give you a piece of the information and then have you buy information later like a lot of these guys do. <laughs> he's going to give you the whole fucking thing on a silver platter and you just got to fucking pick it up and eat it, right? So <laughs> whatever the <laughs> analogy is. <laughs> Whatever. Guys, if you want to get in touch with John, shoot me a message on Facebook. I will set up um, a way for you to get in touch with them, get on this calendar, uh, make a comment on a message, the business, not bullshit live page. Uh, and I'll see that and we'll, I'll get something sorted out where if you need to jump on a one-on-one -on -one with him, we can get that all sorted out. That's not a problem. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I right, think man. that's it. So for those of you that are going to be in Denver, We'll see you there. Um, and that, thanks a lot, John, for your time. And um, I'll see you soon as well. Yeah, my pleasure, man. We're looking forward to uh, to Denver. As I said, biz, not BS, B-I-Z, not BS. Use that code. Uh, the ticket price is refundable. So you get to come for free. Uh, uh, when you turn up, we will refund your ticket price. So, uh, mate, thank you. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you for those that are asking questions. Thank you for turning up to this uh, to this live meet. And uh, look forward to seeing you in Denver.